hobbits. No worries. <laughs> Hey, no, no, first through the door. What, oh, Fred, how you doing? Yes, yeah, straight through. And no big deal. <laughs> how are you doing? Ah, oh, J-Post. What, oh, indeed. Mechs are plenty, my friend. Mechs are plenty. <laughs> but Nom Nom Fighter, how do you ambush people if we have no bushes? Checkmate internet. Sorry, I'm in a very silly mood. How are you doing? J Post, how are you doing? We have Sleepy River. Uh, she got a long old walk this morning and delighted in coming back into the house. Uh, excitable and very cold and wet. But it's fine, it's fine. A Deus Watto Wraith Watto! Mr. Squarepick Watto! Come on in, Eriman, hello, hello. Watto, friend! Neopale Watto! To the stammering gamer Watto, friend. Come on in, come on in. Drake Ray Watto! Varbles, hello, hello. Dashkel Watto! Come on in, friends. Um, forgive me while I'm still pushing a, a couple of buttons, but I'm gonna level with you. Aside from our usual industry banter and um, caffeinated nonsense, you're probably going to have to hear about a lot of very obscure giant robot games today. Like a lot of obscure robot games. Captain Stephanie Barnes, head of House Valkyrie. What ho, friend! Lizzie, I hope I said hello. I hope I said hello. If I didn't, there's two hellos. What ho? Lizzie T. Powell. Um, Draco Ray. So today we are going to be playing Phantom Brigade. Phantom Brigade is a simultaneous turn-based mech RPG um, put together by a, a wonderful group of devs published by uh, Brace Yourself Games uh, who are very, very good friends and there's no way to get into talking about this game without going into the feckin' weeds of like really obscure giant robot video games so like, dust off your heavy gear manuals, get yourself ready for some Star Siege nonsense. We're going to be talking Metal Warriors, Metal Marines, Metal Slug. Oh, it's going to be good. I'm probably going to be end up gnatching your ear off about Fasele like three or four times. That's just going to happen today. <clears throat> Oh, uh, okay, and Mr. Squarepeg, nothing gets ticked off until it happens in 2020 rules. Because, where were the murder hornets? Murder hornets didn't happen. And uh, last year, we cracked open a sarcophagus and drank down some weird stuff. Did we get... Did we get all the cool hotness from the mummy? No. No, we did not. The amount of Brendan Fraser in the world since cracking, cracking open that sarcophagi has remained exactly the same. Think about that. <laughs> uh, Lizzie's asking if we've dealt with the ghost problem. Either the ghost problem solved itself or I stopped noticing. I'm not sure which. Uh, Draco Ray's asking if they can pilot one of the uh, one of the mechs. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know if we get to do customization on the pilots or what have you. Um, Phantom Brigade came out in early access last week, week before. So this is still like a, a, a pre-version one. And usually I try and wait until games are at full, so it doesn't seem like... So it doesn't seem like wailing on a title when it's not at its, its full peak. But I am too excited for this game. I've been excited for this game since they announced it, and I'm so ready to get into it today. So I'm bringing you all with me. Catch us, Watto! Uh, to the Iron Markers, Watto, friend. Vanderbeast! 
Head of House Order Watch. Oh, friend! Two house heads in. Oh, actually, we only have two house heads because Carl do all their hunting from the shadows. So if they have a, a head of house, we have no idea who it is. And chaos is chaos. Try and put someone in charge of chaos. You can. It's gonna, it's gonna be messy. Anyway, in feathers, Martin Watto. Come on in, come on in. Um. Vigil Gaming News, has always, has yes. been Do you know that there are interesting, that but nothing, hate nothing brutal. Real kids, animals, and women with <laughs> Real Hunter says that anyone can lead chaos so by being the first one to start running. I like that. Uh, Eriman adding, Carl doesn't have a leader, or a PR office. Uh, Stammering says, as always, you uh, a welcome bit of background foreground to be rushing to make for portfolio work. Uh, well, if there's anything we can help with, friend, let us know. Uh, and Van Beast, thank you for, for filling up the pint glass. Uh, Jpo says, saw Gundam news that the original series of more is coming to Funimation streaming thing tomorrow. Are we cool? I mean, I I don't know if it's still up on YouTube, but all the original movies were free to watch. Uh, there's a site called Gundam Info, and they rotate out Gundam series on YouTube. You can just watch. El Ravenger Watto! And yeah, I am Marcus. Strags still has the Yaldum. And if you look at the numbers behind Strags' Yaldum, you realise... The terrifying force of not only how much they put into the longship, but also how much everyone else put in that same day. Uh, and it has been nice. Um, Fiona's car did some weird stuff today, so she took it in. She's getting the uh, things aligned, whatever that means, and cars. But it is nice when they turn around like, all right, you need to do this. And we're like, okay, we don't have to, we don't have to choose between eating and having a car that won't, I don't know, have the wheels spontaneously eject. I don't drive. I don't know. Uh, and Neopail, well, obviously I'm not allowed to look at the secret discord, so I couldn't say. Uh, but I can say that uh, Baron Sheep is staunchly house chaos. Um, although, uh, J-Post, what I will say on Gundam News is I'm starting to get a little, well, worried's the wrong term, but, uh, they're slowly releasing stuff from what's going to be the next Gundam movie, Gundam Hathaway, where Murder Goose came from. Uh, I think my, Murder Goose might actually be the baddie. I'm not entirely sure, but Murder Goose might be the baddie. Oh, yeah, don't, no, Sadlin, I'm sorry, you're so right. There has not now, nor has there ever been a secret discord. There is also no war in Ba Sing Se. Yeah, j -Post, the goose, evil. Very. Oh yeah, and Lizzie, you're right. Baron has not been quiet about his support of House Chaos. That's not a revelation. And Vanderbeast going with an arty fill to start our day off. Will it last? I highly doubt it. But for these brief fleeting moments, order reigns supreme. And I'm not saying that to fish or, or mock anyone. I'm just, I'm just giving, I'm giving house order their dues. So look, friends, grab yourself a copper, get yourself um, snackage or water, whatever. But it's still a cup it's Viking not... 64 Valkyrie. I tried to interrupt a, uh, a text-to-speech there. It's not a cult, though. It's not a cult. Why do you all do this to me? But, Bacon Avenger, thank you for the 200 bits. Um, the game we're going to be playing today is Very Giant Robots. It has simultaneous turn-based maneuvers with this whole, like, cool cinematic badassery thing going on. It's gonna take some getting used to. And... While I have described it as kind of like the spiritual successor to... Hey. 
Thank you, J-Post. Yeah, as I was saying earlier, this one had a, a good old long walk this morning. And she came back a little rain-soaked. Of course, immediately came up to me and went, Ah, you're my best friend. I'm like, and you are icy cold and damp. If I wasn't awake before. Um, yeah, today's game is definitely best described as... Actually, you know what? It's not best described as a spiritual successor to Fasalo, because no one played that apart from me. Reactor like... online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Oh, hey, look, it's the time again. Oh, hey, look, indeed. Harmonious feckin' thank you. God, 23 months of listening to me waffle on. I mean, usually people should have some kind of intervention at, like, month 20. <laughs> if you like to think you've been listening to this idiot on the internet, and we're just a little worried about you. No, um, Harmonious, thank you kindly, friend. Um... Oh! Okay, so the ghosts aren't out. Okay, so... Uh, Harmonious, Havoc Puppy Gaming, Quasimoto, Watto, friends! Oh. Coming in, friends, coming in. Alright, TLDR. We're playing robot games today. You're gonna have to hear about a lot of other robot games. We will not get through the stream without me mentioning... Uh, the Neo Geo Color Pocket at least five times. At least. In fact, like, friends, I know it was on wish lists, but I actually have a, a cartridge of Fasele on my desk. Like, that's the level to which I love this game. I don't even have a Neo Geo Color Pocket out here. I've still got my old one back in the UK, because, like, I, I, I couldn't... I wouldn't get rid of it. Uh, there are only... There are only ever... Um, uh, 10,000 cartridges of this made. Never officially released in the US because um, it came out as the Neo Geo Color Pocket went out of business. So they released like 10k cartridges in Europe and that was about it. I think you can still get the Japanese carts but that's another matter. Woot, it's cult massive. It is nothing of the sort. Favor 6. It is nothing of the sort. Thank you kindly for 200 bits, but it is not. Although I will accept that uh, the 21st is now, what's it called? Uh, Wolf Newt? Wolf Newt is a made up holiday where uh, if people are nice to dogs, then they get nice things. But only if they are nice to dogs. Oh yeah, uh, Clank, lurk away, dear friend, lurk away. Um, I have a brand new giant robot game to show you, and I'm going to be talking your ear off about giant robots today. I just... You get to experience all the <coughs> Will and Tog late night mech conversations, uh, sans it being four in the morning, all wind up. So I guess we have a mech train. I guess we have a mech train. what mech train jams would be. <laughs> Oi! That is not the correct mech music! That's not the correct train music! And... There we go! Because while I may not be quite ready to... To SCREAM AT THE HEAVENS! At least get the jams going. Uh, Joda Watto! Coming in, coming in! Oh, definitely gonna need more coffee today! Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons <laughs> online. All systems nominal. Choo choo what who? Choo choo indeed, friend. Choo choo indeed. How many months is that? Eight months. Spend some out, you feckin' ledge. Look, <laughs> Cam Steph just adding. Ironically, just after that, the House Valkyrie gave up after six months. I mean, if anything, you're probably responsible for bringing more people in. Alright, who else is jumping in? Neo Pale. Vanderbeast. Giving us a nice, initially a dusting of snowmen, but that's now been very well shaken by a couple people. 
Alright, first train's beaten. Wait, no. First station's beaten. I mean, whether the train is beaten or not is a matter of perspective. You just drove it through the fat controller's house. And that is a reference older than all of us. So if it's a cult and there are mechs, does it make the long ship ultramarines? All of the statements are false, apart from robots! It's not a cult! And if, if, and if we ever did go down that path, I can assure you the Smurf Legion would not be our foundation. You're taking this into You're taking this into points. Secretly Robin, good morning, what ho? Come on in, come on in. Raven guard Dulce Smurfs. Not Raven, Rave in. Like glow sticks uns uns uns. That's the that's the correct means. But also, sorry, here's me being here's me being very blase. Bacon Avenger, Favor Six, and more well, and Beast, and all of you. Thank you for throwing bits in. Even if you do use them to wind me up something fierce. <laughs> Yeah, Vanderbeast, we like Space Wolves. Space Wolves is closest. I definitely, uh. Definitely with a few stark changes. Stop that incessant clicking. Oh! Okay, it looks like Quasi's kind of like shaken off the morning. Shaken off the morning by, uh, starting the hunt. Uh, Quasi gifted a sub just to the crowd and went to uh, Vesidian. No, Vestian? Vestian. Whichever of those. Uh, to Luke Watto, coming in, coming in. You have joined us mid train. How do you choose to proceed? I'll put a pen in my hair again. Sorry, White Balance doesn't like that I'm wearing a dark hoodie with murder. It's getting very grumbly at me. Uh, Robin's been doing the fancy new online learning stuff for UE4. Nice. Just in time for us all to have to relearn uh, <laughs> UE5. Let me slam your growler with cakes. I do not. I do. No. 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 Lizzie, you absolute terror. No. Thank you for the 500 bits. You chronic terror. Fucking yo. Oh wow, the Quasi's on a hunt. Whoa, 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 bring it back here. We have very specific. Soviet Watto! So you sneaking in there. Oh, Quasi said they felt caught up giving one to the crowd. Well, it was more like loosing an arrow into a group. Um, but thank you for gifting one to Luke. That's real feckin' kind of you, yo. Uh, and Varble's working with House Order, keeping that pint glass filled. Smart, smart. With but moments. Oh! Okay, Varble's sneaking it through to next round. So, I'm uh, sorry, Varble gifted a sub to Soviet. That is fucking cool of you. Like, I know House Carl's uh, goal is to hunt the unsubbed. But I'm very grateful. Alright, so I can thank you, y'all.
And Vanabeast giving it a bloody good go at keeping the pie glass filled. Tal, you heard nothing of the sort! You heard nothing of the sort, Tal. Oh. Also, I know you can't talk about it now, but yeah, I'm real happy for you, dude. Especially considering, you know. Uh, shout out to Mark. Uh, oh, to Zini Wato! So, coming in, friends, coming in. I hope you're ready for post train just mech flavored nonsense, because that's where we're going today. Like, I get this feeling like we're gonna be. We're gonna be talking. Fucking hell. Battletech Heavy Gear. Uh, Heavy Gear's story is a much sadder one. No doubt we'll be talking. Get him! But probably close to like Assault Suits VTOMs and stuff like that. Or Votroms or however you pronounce it. Uh, Ortizini's waging war on Ganon in Age of Calamity. Let us know how you do on that one. <laughs> I'm sure you'll do great, champ. Don't worry, we believe in you. <laughs> Um, but just, um, on the off chance, do you uh, know where there's a healing sarcophagus around anywhere? Okay, and it seems like this is, like, House Carl does not want to be outdone today. Some anonymous Mother Hubbard, the, the ghost, the ghost hunters, tagged Ortizini. Who wants to sing? Oh, hey! Speaking of good friendos, Jack Strider, Wato, how you doing? Uh, thank you for the host, dude. What's going down? Um, I'm about to talk everyone's ear off about giant robots for the rest of the day. Stop that incessant clicking. Uh, Famous Six says, does Power Rangers count as mech show, the Zords and all that? Um, most people put it into the Super Sentai regions like Kaiman Rider, but it is a show with mechs in it, yes. Who wants to sing? Uh, nom nom, thank you kindly. Uh, Soviet's asking, do you have a bingo card board for the golden joysticks by any chance? Uh, no, because they don't matter. Uh, the golden joysticks, I think, is one of the one of the ones that has mostly public voting, uh, and it also has no rules against campaigning and stuff like that. So, whoever has the largest user base wins at the end. Next question. <laughs> oh, Dismu Quato. Uh, we are hyping. We are hyping for another minute and twenty one seconds. Night Valen, what? Oh, come on in, come on in, friends. Seriously, I am going to be very about the giant robots today. Just. Uh, Hindle, how you doing, friend? What? Oh, and welcome. <laughs> Night Valen, isn't that every award show, Kappa? Hey, like, well, I can't talk about. Well, I can't talk about what is in, and I can't talk about the process. Like, the BAFTA Awards. I think they closed submission on the 20th, and it's taken genuinely seriously by the people taking part in it, and it is far more than just a most popular game wins contest, which I'm real proud of. Now, I will say, though, that um, Hades does deserve to be on on a lot of awards list. Stop that incessant Holy shy! Holy shy! Sorry, I I feel like I blinked for a second because I I thought the I thought the train had come to a close, but El Ravenger was like, "Now nah, we're doing this." Okay, uh, fecking thank you. Uh, friends, El Ravage has gifted out five Stop subs like it's no big deal. The old house Carl multi repeater. Uh, those went out to uh, LOL Manzi, that MS Gamer, uh, Alka Holiday, 69, uh, the Ubermook, and I want to go with Redzev? Redzev? Stop that incessant clicking. Oh, Lily Longbean, I almost didn't see you there. 
Watto friend, come on in, come on in. <laughs> Real Hunters, I just got done downloading the uh, the Outer Worlds, so they won't be joining the Earth Alliance Pilots Corps. That's actually the Longship Mobile Armored Division, or LAMAD for short. Uh, our Battletech company was called the Affordable Choice, which is we're not the best mercenary company, but we're the best that you can afford. Uh, our Phantom Brigade doesn't have a team doesn't have a name yet. This particular off-brand of uh, Stop our particular off-brand of Lamad, but we'll see how it goes. I think the bigger question, rather than is Power Rangers a mech show, is Inner Space a mech show? Tiny people controlling a whole human from the inside? That sounds like a mech show to me. <laughs> Dismook saying, We're not the mercenary company you need, but we're the one you deserve. You know, that sounds more like a threat, right? It sounds, it sounds more like a, uh, You're done bad and here's what you get. Hindle site, what about Endo Team? God. Um, God, we should revisit that whole thing again, because that was a lot of fun to do. Uh, though, if we are talking about, like, Robotech, Battletech, and all of that, we will end up talking about Exo Squad today, so... Brace yourselves. Because um, even Tog uh, didn't realise about um, the cartoon Exo Squad being the Flashpoint for the whole Harmony Gold... Battletech licensing war that raged for years. That was one of the big things that contributed to the, fall, the downfall of FASA. Uh, mine, Endo Team was a fake giant robot cartoon that we came up with, so we could do a video game design exercise without going into, like, branded IPs. The idea being is that anyone who worked on that little document could use it in the future without anything being, um, uh, without having to worry about anything being copywritten. Uh, Havoc Puppy says, no mech warrior? No, no, no. Um, so, have you ever, uh, so Havoc Puppy, have you ever heard of the unseen mechs? Uh, Quasi's saying, I think we need tiers in the affordable choice. Like, hiring AC Gold gets you uh, a guarantee that your hired recruits will be able to carry their own equipment. I think it's more the case of, like, if they have the money to afford AC Gold, they'd go elsewhere. With the affordable choice. Man, this has been a level 3 train, like, no big deal. I, I thought it was going to be a teeny tiny train. I was, I was proven wrong once more. You lovely Mother Hubbard. Also, all of these trains are the best excuse to blare this track, like, all the time. And this Mook says, we're basically the A-Team. Wait, no, like, did the A-Team ever actually get paid? I don't remember the A-Team ever getting, like, a feckin' paycheck. Does anyone else? Oh, in fact, now I'm going to be thinking about that for the rest of the day. Hang on, let me bring, let me bring my yelling down just a little bit, sort of blowing everyone's ears out. Oh, mine says they got paid in unexposure. Yeah, please don't expose us. We're the 18. Okay, and there we go. A level 3 train to start our day. Not too feckin' shabby, friends! Not too feckin' shabby. Thank you all. Alright, I'm gonna be... I'm gonna be a big old cheese monster for a sec. Because I had some, like, sober late night feels last night. And I tried to write them down. It didn't really come across. So I just wanted to tell you. Don't worry, this isn't like a... a it's nothing bad. Nothing's happened. Um, this could be a little bit of a, 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 a conversational whiplash. But I promise we're bringing it back to thank yous and giant robots. 
So last night, I'm doing some research into a video game that was kickstarted. Now, the game doesn't necessarily matter, but it was one of those that it kind of, it's been languishing in development hell for a couple of years, and whether or not, or when it's going to come out is still very much up in the air. Um, but I did some research into this game, and unfortunately, the only article that I could find recently, I didn't know it when I clicked on it, unfortunately, uh, was written by a very, very terrible person. It's one of those, like, one of the, the ditizens that, while they may exist in gaming, their their purpose, their focus, is just to be someone who gets people riled up, gets people hating one another, and profits off it. You know, I... How to phrase this? I was curious as to how someone could write an article that was so directly hateful. I made the mistake of looking on their Twitter... Um, and the answer became very clear very quickly. It's a, a repost and troll type content creator that says a lot of bad stuff and riles up a lot of people and has a very, very, very large audience because of it. And I looked at this and my first thought was, I guess, the same feeling that a lot of people get, which is, ah, oh, this is a horrible person. How do they have so many cool peoples? And then I was like, wait, fucking hang on. So I kind of, I did the internet equivalent of kind of like tottering back the longship and I poked in on everybody and there was a bunch of people's cat pictures. There was some lovely Mother Hubbard looking after one another in human maintenance. Um, the sheer number of video games that everybody's into. Um, the continued success of the Ark Survival Evolved team and the, the, the nonsense that they are creating in it's all its glory. And I kind of sat back. I started to think about the fact that I get to do this. Like, not to make it selfish, but like, if you think about the long ship, we kind of have two parts to us. Like, we have this right here, and we have the Discord, and the things kind of like centered around both of them, right? And I realized that what we are able to do, the means of which we're able to hang out, do this all the time, fucking that we've been able to do this without, like, resulting to cheap tactics like, you know, spreading hate or getting grumpy or or leaning into the the really nasty parts of, of gaming as a culture. That there's not only a value in being kind to each other, being empathic first and just putting love with the video games there, but it works, and it works better. Like... If you think about efficiency, the amount of hate that is required to achieve even a little bit of what the longship does, you need so much more like anger and grumpiness and, and nastiness, comparable to the same amount of like chipperness. Not unlike the seminal movie Monsters Inc. And sorry, I'm getting a bit whimsical here. I guess what I'm saying is that we. You are all a lovely bunch of Mother Hubbards, and you do so much looking after each other and hanging out here and being feckin' excellent. And that it is proof that the things that we love, like video games, nerdery, and all of that, is far more powerful beyond the, the loudest detractors. <laughs> Hinders, what do you mean? Always grumpy. Ah. Uh... I I know within that chest beats a, beats a warm heart, dear Hindle. I've seen you looking after people. I've seen you. Don't think I don't notice. So that's it. I I wasn't able to sum up my feelings last night, but that's what it comes down to. The longship as a group is proof that Karen compassion for each other is far more powerful than anger and hate and discrimination like we're the mathematical proof we are so much more powerful than someone with a user base an order of magnitude larger than ours and that's not nothing that's feckin incredible so yeah i wanted to say that i wanted to say that outside of you know broken will i wanted to say that outside of the the bombastic moments because it was a lovely little epiphany last night, and it it makes me so fucking proud to be here in front of you. Please forgive my swears. <laughs> okay, back to smooth jams and robots. I just I had to share that with you. Okay.
I had to share that with you. And like I said, I know that the, that whole mini rant there is basically the entire point of Monsters, Inc. Uh, Dismook adding, to quote Doctor Who, remember, hate is always foolish, and love, love is always wise. So try to be nice, and never fail to be kind. I reckon so. Oh, sorry about that. I didn't mean to, to pour a bucket of feels on you all. I just, I spent a few times trying to write that out last night in a way that didn't make it sound like I'd just crawled into a bottle of gin and gotten weird. <laughs> uh, the real hunter says we'd only take a reasonable amount of Vikings who care about each other to permanently end the purge. Or alternatively, the making of the purge movies. See, I reckon that we would still commit a bunch of crimes, but they wouldn't be they wouldn't be sensible crimes. Like, we'd make haggis on purge night, because the ingredients for haggis are illegal in Washington State. Um, and I do believe there'd be a lot of people looking after each other. Though, um, a very good friend of mine loves the Purge movies. Not because of the violence, but because of how they explore, like, social dynamics. Sometimes ham-fistedly, but I don't know, I keep thinking of them. Um, I keep thinking of them. And yeah, as Salen says, mind some, uh, some nibbling on the rich. Oh, like, Aaron's like, uh, eat the rich, go get groceries. I mean, I can see us in a metallic longship crashing into a Stop supermarket so that we can feed, so we can feed people. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, Quasi. Illegal private server MMOs. All about that. Get that, uh, that custom shard World of Warcraft going. Keith is like, is this how we arrive to get snacks for Logcon? Well, I mean, hopefully we don't, it <laughs> doesn't get to a purge type situation, but there we go. To Kingly Revenge, Wato. Welcome. Yeah, one 24 hour WoW custom raid server with mods, integrated. There we go. Okie dokie Lokis. But uh, steering away from darker topics, dear friends. Steering away from darker topics. Um, I am very, very excited for today's game. Uh, if you are not down for giant robots, I'm sorry how much we're going to be talking about them today. Oh, Deus has just needed an 18-wheeler ship on the back. I think that would work. Oh, Kisa, we get so many burritos. So many burritos. Get up. <laughs> Favor 6 says, It occurs to me that any venue that would look at the name Longcon would be like, Looks sus to me, vote them out. Honestly, I've dealt with venues and event organization companies enough. If you pay, they do not give a feck. Like... This is how things like Dashcon happen. Like, they manage to make the booking fee, which is mostly non-refundable. And so long as it doesn't, so long as they're not asking for a date that clashes with another, another event they have planned, honestly, like, Longcon wouldn't even be close to the weirdest thing that we would suggest in most venues. Yeah, Tal's like, if you pay and don't screw the place up. And even then, like, screwing the place up means you don't get to come back. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you were, you know, if if you wanted to call your event Trash Hotel Con, they might go, uh, I'm sorry, what? Oh, and Salen makes a very good point that um, uh, date choice is based on the history of selling room uh, of hotel rooms in the city. Yep. 
Um, so convention affordability is based on proximity to other events. I believe um, one of the reasons why so many conventions are during a certain block of time in the US is due to uh, the off season of certain sports. Oh, Stammering Gamer, no! No! Sorry, Stammering Gamer says that they just put a uh, a piece of paper covered in wet acrylic paint. Paint side down on the table. I mean, now your table's super arty. Um, also, I should point out, we're not sponsored by New Type, but I have so many of their stickers around. It does look like it. I got one of these little Mother Hubbards that's basically my extended coffee mat slash we're making gandips. Uh, Kisa says, number one rule of long con, we gotta treat the venue nice. Oh, hells yeah. Mainly because the chances of us get wonky donkey drunk are quite high, so we need to be able to uh, apologize with sincerity. <laughs> That's why I'm always like, treat all the event organizers lovely, just in case they see you shit-faced. Stooge! As soon as I said the words shit-faced, Stooge is like, we are here to witness your she. Stooge, how are you doing? How was your morning? Hello, hello. And friends, here's me endeavoring to be a better, uh, a better host. Uh, if you need early morning nonsense, um, uh, Stooge is currently doing a bunch of stuff, specifically um, uh, Danganronpa today. So if you have had an interest in that series, do throw Stooge a follow, all right? Uh, back on the hotels conversation, Havoc was saying sounds about right. Hotels aren't renting rooms to Seahawks fans when PAX West and ECC, uh, ECCC happens for sure. Yeah. Tal says, just hope Paul doesn't notice our names on the event organizers. Well, in fairness, um, uh, when we did that one, um, I booked it as Rocketworks. Um, at, well, with Dean's name as Rocketworks. And I think I was given, I was given, what was it, five passes? So, so long as you had accommodation, I didn't need to put your name down. His face. Sorry, friends. Um... Uh, one of the guys who works for Read Pop in the UK as an event organizer, does a lot of work on MCM and stuff like that, um, knows me and Tal. Uh, and before we were both simultaneously industry, he knew me and Tal from one year where they put our tables together and we spent three days singing the a cappella version of Duel of Fates. Um, now, we don't know if anyone ever complained. We don't know if there were noise complaints. But from that event onwards, they never ever put me and Tal near each other again. Like, it was forbidden. Anyway, splash cut a few years later, and um, Paul sees me and Tal walking up in, um, oh, an EGX res wearing matching uh, staff shirts. And the look on his face was like, no, 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 no. Uh, Van Der says, always be nice to the venue. The people who have to clean up deserve your respect. Oh, absolutely. And they'll be the ones that, like, that pull out the big stops or pull your ass out of the fire. Another me and Tal story was um, we were at an industry event uh, where the bar ended up closing like two hours early and no one had a backup plan. All the nearby pubs were either shut or shifty. So I have this, this sea of nerds, this sea of nerds with us. And so Tal and I, we rolled the dice. We were like, look, there's a bar at our hotel. Do you want to chance it? And everyone's like, Burr! so we lead this troop of nerds. Like we've got like hardcore, um, longtime game veteran devs, streamers, friends and fans, and fan and just individuals we picked up along the way, like a nerdy Katamari ball. And we rolled into the hotel bar. It's oh, it must have been like half ten, quarter to eleven. 
and the barman who we had been hanging out with the last couple of days, who would we made a point of being lovely to, decided not only was he gonna keep serving, he stayed open for an extra two hours, kept serving us well into the night. He didn't have to do that. He was not on shift. He could have he could have tapped out at any point. But he didn't. And he was a feckin' hero about it. You know, he did a little bit of I mean, it was a feckin' um what was it? It was like a It was one of the fancier, I wanna say travel lodges, hotel inns. So this guy wasn't working with like a, a super whooper, like Hilton. Was it the Hilton? Fuck, did we go to the Hilton? Probably. That actually sounds right, because, uh... You know what? I can't finish that sentence, so you're just gonna have to... You just have to understand there was a reason we went to that place. Anyway, anyway. Yeah. It's that thing of, like... You should never... I mean, shit, sorry. No, you all know this. I was about to say something very, very, um... Uh, contrite. Which you already know, like, one shouldn't strive to do kindness for rewards, but you often find that, you know, it comes back in spades. Um, although, uh, Salen does make a good point on the, the side conversations, which is, uh, PAX is a different kettle of monkeys when it comes to, like, events, because at least in the, the city of Seattle, it's such a big draw once a year. And it makes so much more money than like sporting events that unless there's a prior uh, event going on, so, like PAX gets to just pick its dates. If you get that big, it's feckin' grand. Yeah, kindness begets kindness, Tal. That's a way more succinct. And Dash adding, also, Watto, um, one shouldn't need rewards to be kind. But on the other hand, if all advertising were wholesome and constructive, the world would be a better place. And Neo Shado, Watto! Uh, it goes bloody marvellous. We are, what, about 10 minutes out from giant robots? Um, God, I don't want to make him the coffee before we kick off. Decisions, decisions, my friends. Decisions, decisions. Oh, Kisa, that is not fair. Kisa just like, I had a pumpkin pie shake. Why are you gonna do me like this? Oh, that's, that's a snappy one. Work for the cause, not the applause. Oh, yeah, Salem. I've, I've heard that story of yours, but, um, yeah. Uh, Salem was just saying that uh, at one PAX East, the um, the Enforcers After After Party venue wasn't available, and they ended up descending on a, on a place that just wasn't prepared. Ugh. A Bacon Avenger saying, I think PAX Prime, I mean West, you can call it Prime, I'm not going to be mad. Uh, taking over most of downtown Seattle says enough about its draw. Oh, yeah. It's... I remember it, trying to explain it to people back home. Of, like, it's not just an event that takes place in, like, a... In a convention hall in a hotel. It takes place downtown Seattle. God, we played Street D&D last PAX that was open. That was a good night. That was a very good night. Yeah. That's a good way of putting it, Stooge. Pax Prime is a city within a city. Giza's like, I want to do street D and D. Hey, when the when the world is safe to do so, like, we'll get into we'll we'll drag everybody up here. We'll get into some mischief. Uh, Dismook says, I still remember one MCM London at uh, the Premier Inn. People got so drunk, they were in front of the hotel in toga sheets. I'm sure the hotel loved that. Yeah. God. Now, MCM's another flavor. There's just there's just something about the cosplay anime crowd that's just out to get wrecked. And I say that as someone who went to anime conventions in my youth to get 
wrecked. Balrat's Wato. I still remember being so nervous for feckin' out. This is going to show my age. Uh, I was entering my first AMV contest, which I got third place. Uh, that we hit the bar and just started doing shots of Bacardi. I don't even remember who won. But my friends, and I say friends, people I'd met like 12 hours prior all came out to watch, which was real cool. So, um, MCM, MCM's a special flavor. Me and Tal, uh, sorry, MCM is uh, kind of like an equivocant uh, Comic-Con, but set in London. Uh, me and Tal mostly work like the indie stalls, like the, the artist alley and whatnot, but there are so many spheres. The, there's a huge green out front, a huge garden by the water, and this ends up being its own party. Um, Sorry, uh, I just had a bunch of flashbacks all at once there. Oh, Nom Nom says the last MCM in London was the first time they visited the UK. Wow, that's a crash course. Saw Crit Roll Live, played like, th then played like three hours of an unreleased Smash game because most people could not come for Davidji games. The live was brought people back to life. Yo! And uh, I told like, wait, how much does it cost to buy a bus? on the east coast and drive it to the west coast. I don't know, Tal, there's a lot of ugh, in the middle. <laughs> oh, Quasi, well now I know why we're friends, Quasi. Quasi's saying, uh, as someone used to run a convention with an AMV event, I've had to explain to security some of the things that come out of that. Yeah. Oh, good times, good times. And friends, let us enjoy the nostalgia of these events. Like, we're gonna get through 2020, we're gonna kick its ass, and then when everything is safe and fine, we're gonna forge new convention stories. Although, I'm, I'm liking Salen's idea that maybe, maybe it's, let's get a train rather than a bus because we can get more drunk on a train. I mean, comfortable. We can get more comfortable on a train. <laughs> oh, and Catros has managed to make their Destiny 2 character look like a Power Ranger. Go you. Oh, and sorry, I hope I said hello. Uh... Oh. Vanaby says, so Long Con is a convention on a train. Nothing that says we can't. Oh, True Snow White. Watto, friend, coming in, coming in. Uh, I'm just uh, cooking us up a, a, a quick little post. And friends, if you uh, if you're new here, uh, long con something we've kind of mused over. It's I guess it's more a, a, a fun dream than anything else. But it's like if we suddenly had like a million bucks kicking around, it's the idea that we'd basically hold a convention, pay for everybody's flights and accommodation, get everyone over, and have our own event. But because a long ship convention shortens to long con, it sounds like a scam, which I also love. Um, I believe uh, the nerdy rapper Beefy made a song called Long Con, which is actually a banger, but more about like 
animu conventions that scam people rather than anything else. I still love the fact that Firefest was basically long. I was basically dash con for people with money. That has continued to make me smile. Sometimes I just go back and rewatch the uh, the Firefest documentary just just to grin. Jarland's like, I, sorry, I heard there'd be robots. Just a, just a second, to Jarland, just a second. Uh, so Tal says, I want to request about 30k to drive a bus from east coast to west coast, picking up long shippers along the way. Well, Tal, what if we get you and them train tickets and then cover the accommodation from their location to the train to meet you there? You have some very smooth moves, my friend. Can I ask you a favor? Hmm? Can you teach a guy like me how to make all those cool moves? Like judo and kung fu. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm just, I'm just pitching ideas. And we're, we're still in the planning scheme. Hey, well, I've posted the parcel and given you and Fiona the tracking code for parcel force. It might be a good idea to pick it up when it arrives. There are other bits in there, too. Hey, uh, sorry, no worries. Uh, and if you sent it to the P.O. box, then you don't need to worry because it'll get grabbed as it shows up. So it won't be sitting on like a doorstep or anything. Um, actually, so uh, sorry. Uh, thank you for 300 bits on that as well. Um... I am not expecting anything, friends. Like, my job throughout this holiday season is to hang out with you lot as much as possible. Although, I have been told I have to take Thursday off. Uh, Fiona Fiona has made it very clear that I am not allowed to stream on Thursday. And that is okay. Um, but throughout kind of like the Christmas season, I'm going to try and be as here as much as possible. Um, if you do want to send anything to myself or Fiona... Um, there is the P.O. box down at the doobly-doo. Um, we've... Uh, there's a wish list, but that's honestly just Gundams at this point for me. Um, I've been using my wish list as a bookmark for Gandams. Um, if you do want to send stuff, sooner rather than later, because this year, everyone is going to be sending stuff. It's going to be package again. But again, I do not expect anything. I do not... I, I, I do not... I am not left for wanting. Now, back to the other one. Um, Nom Nom was saying, a uh, fun anecdote from MCMs. Part of the program for Critical Role's second panel, there was a showing in the first episode of the new show. Uh, oh, a sh new show, Vikings. There's like 75% people were there to save their seats for Critical Role. And the subject to the most awkward atmosphere of the crowd, they showed people two minutes... Oh, they showed two people doing the nasty for minutes. Oh yeah, they do many a sex in Vikings. Probably should have thought that one. Ah, oh, well, bow rats. I enjoy your company, so thank you, y'all. I try. Oh, favor six. I see favor six. I just assumed it was. Uh, whenever anyone mentions Universal, I assume they want to mention the shark ride. But no, you're right. Favor six says we could have Megatron do the opening ceremony for Long Con if we hold it at Universal Studios. It means becoming like clear And then Tal's saying, okay, okay, how about this? Rent a train straight from east to west, buy tickets for long shippers to meet uh, along the mainline stations. Yes. And then, thing is, this is if we mystically just suddenly have a million dollars. So we'll be able to cover, like, travel to and from the train station as well. Um, though the thing where I start getting a little bit like, uh, um, is that because we're already paying for everyone's flights and accommodations, it's where do we go? Like, and again, this is when the world is uh, when the world is safe for international travel and things like that. It's like on the one hand, I'd love to take everybody to some strange corner of the world, you know, go to a fecking castle. But on the other, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm such a Seattle fanboy. But there's so much around this area that I'd love to show you all. So I'm always in many minds about like where we should host it how we should do it <laughs> it's uh so stammering gamer it's not i'm not making subtle hinting it's more the case of like last year people sent stuff and it didn't arrive until like after new years and things and i felt i felt guilty i felt guilty like if someone went to the trouble of sending something for christmas and i wasn't you know so, I, I expect nothing. I'm asking for nothing. Um, just if that is a thing that you choose to do. All right.
right? Oh, Lizzie makes a good point. Year one, Seattle. Year two, Banff. It's a good point. I mean, a million dollars is an inordinate amount of money. Uh, Real Hunter says, idea. Should we do the Seattle Last of Us tour for Long Con? I mean, I guess so. The Last of Us isn't quite the the geography and to, the geography and um, layout of a few of the places in there isn't quite right. Uh, I watched um, a little bit of uh, I watched a little bit of it and it's not quite there. Oh, we could do a bar crawl, I guess. That's that's something. Uh, so, Secretly Robin, uh, I I think you underestimate how much money a million dollars is. Um, like, I've gotten I've gotten a couple of hundred uh, journalists around the world for a lot less than a million dollars, and that's with very expensive accommodation. Okay, okay. Friends. Uh, I have... I have managed to stay relatively calm this morning, and I'm kind of proud of myself for that one. But it's robot time. It's robot time. Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Two years of feckery who Feckin' yo. Alness, you glorious mother hubbard. <laughs> you glorious mother hubbard. Feckin' thank you. 24 months, like it ain't no big deal. finished and then it is giant robot o'clock What time is it? It's robot time. What time is it? It's robot time. What are we gonna drive? All the mechs. How do we turn them on? Uh. Just push buttons! Alpha strike activated. <laughs> no! I'd wasted a botlands! Oh, wait, no, it's on Epic, isn't it? Okay, so friends. This is the early version of Phantom Brigade. Uh, currently available uh, on the Epic Store as early access. Um, I have had hands-on with this at, um, God, I think TwitchCon was the last time I played this. Okay, Fancy Jams, I'm gonna need you to, I need you to hold that thought. Yeah, feck, um, Excuse me. All right. Uh, sorry. Bear with, all right. We're gonna need fancy jams for a couple more seconds because the epic launcher is being weird. <laughs> Self destruct activated. Why do we have that button? I, Alice, I do not know. No, I don't need you to verify shit. Stop. Heck no. Sorry. Um, the Epic Launcher does this weird thing where verifications, downloads, but also uninstalls are all stacked on the same list.
uh, and managing it is a pain in the non-denominationals. <laughs> Sorry, so Butlins? When do we take a left hand turn on my way for Little Chef and a Wendy's? I mean, there's one difference between Little Chef and Wendy's. Wendy's is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you glorious mother husbands. Sorry, this Vanderby's like, Get in the bloody robot, Shinji! See, on the one hand... Get in the bloody robot, Shinji. I'm going, I'm going! It's like, friends, on the one hand, Evangelion is a great representation of, like, anxiety, depression, um, you know, issues of one's self-worth, um problems we have with our, our families and the, the social constructs that we we struggle against masquerading as a giant robot show on the other hand if the entirety of Evangelion took place in the north of England it would be a very different show I'm just saying Shinji Shinji lad you get in that bloody robot and I'll tell thee I'll tell thee I'll smack thee up sideways alright you'll get in that robot and you bloody like it I'll tell thee I'm just saying, like, the instrumentality project wouldn't have been as successful. Or very successful, depending on your opinion of it. Now, just quickly, before, as we're getting into this, um, this is early access. This is the experimental build. Um, so, if there are bugs, if there's weirdness, if things start popping up all over the place, or if things explode where they're not meant to explode, that's probably not intentional. Okay, I'm going to need you to... <laughs> okay... Yes. Hello. Thank you. No, see, I'm going to need you to... Excuse me. Excuse me, hello. I need the Wii Store music to play while it's loading. There we go. That logo slaps. Welcome to the Brigade. Honestly, I'm, I'm kind of reading this in almost like a... Welcome to the Brigade! We're excited for you to experience the Phantom Brigade and to have your help shaping its development in early access period. During the cost of development... Blah, blah, blah. All right, you know the rest. Seizure warning. A small percentage of people may experience seizures with lights and explosions. Okay, if you have photosensitivity, consider this your photosensitivity warning. Powered by Wise. No one. Okay, no, sorry. That's unfair. Wise has been a massive help. Wise has been a huge help in the industry. Like, big style. Well, I found my first bug. Okay. <laughs> Nom Nom's like, Will, this is an experimental build. Also, Will. I want to play Unreal Tournament Mix! Um... There was a Egyptian god themed Unreal Tournament mech mod that was feckin' incredible. That's not what I told you to- There we go. 
There we go. Hey! Brace yourself, games. What? Ho, oh, friends! Coming in, coming in. Um, I'm going to say it off the bat. Um, I'm going to be talking a lot about giant robot games. I can understand if you want to get back to, 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 to game devery and not listen to me get all for sale up in here. Um, but I've not played this since the build that went out to uh, TwitchCon last year. And I'm very excited for this. Um, okay, so let me do my spiel. So friends, this is Phantom Brigade. Uh, it is currently available on the uh, Epic Store, but it, uh, by my understanding, it will be coming to Steam. Uh, this is an early access build, so expect bugs. Um, it is a simultaneous turn-based cinematic uh, action RTS game. Um, I have been telling people that it is basically the spiritual successor to Fasele, but no one else has heard of that game. So, for those of you who don't know, that was a simultaneous turn-based mech game on the Neo Geo Color Pocket. Uh, sadly, one of the last games ever to be released. Oh, cool. Games are seated. Uh, I am going to start with tutorial, because I need the refresher. Um, and I want to say again, thank you to Brace Yourself Games for hooking us up with a key for this. I have been so excited for this. And, and I will restate what I said before. If I could do anything to help this game, you just let me know. You need dumb human noise voices. You need additional eyeballs on certain features, functionalities. You feckin' got it, alright? Just ask. Okay, tutorial time. Oh, Dark Arms was a banger. Dark Arms was a banger. Sorry, Favor 6 had a Neo Geo Color Pocket with Dark Arms, yeah. That Biomotor Unicron... Uh, Unitron, sorry. God, that was another classic. And one of the reasons why I'm so excited to show you all this, and one of the reasons why I love Fasele so much, is that... Um, a lot of the time, big giant robot games do tend to be like hardest hitting, longest range wins. It's difficult for giant robot games to give value to the quick, light, speedy mechs over the big stompers. Sorry to strap you in so early today, Lieutenant, but we'll have to cut our checks short. We've lost the town comms last night, and I'd like you to take a look at the tower we have half a click north from here. Okay. Uh, well, I'll, I'll have to make up with extra especially loud amounts of, uh, of talking about giant robots. Um, okay, we're now starting to do a short tutorial, show you main mechanics. It's a, a, just a, a good little reminder. Um, but yeah, so one of the reasons why I fell in love with Fasele was that on the one hand, um, it did that whole kind of cute pocket game art style that does real heavy topics but the other was that in terms of like strategy and combat unlike like mech commander and things like that which again was about just outranging and outfiring your opponent this you had to anticipate what people were going to do because the speed of your mech defined how many movements it could take per turn and all the movements would be executed at once so things like lock-on missiles or shotguns were great because of the wide breadth. It made it very difficult for people to dodge out of the way of them. But things like heavy impact rail guns or the equivalent of PC, uh, P, uh, PCCs of PPCs were difficult because they just shot in a straight line. And if the target was able to dodge out of the way at any point during your shot, then it you just squiff it. The uh, trying to control the other person's movement and then anticipate what they were going to do turned it into this wonderful tactical game especially when it got into cqc now i love front mission i have played uh, every front mission game except for front mission 2 uh, though i've never owned front mission 5 i've just i've played it i haven't owned it i've never finished it um that's a whole nother kettle of monkeys um, but one of the things that Front Mission always fell down on was that uh, close combat mech fights just turn into a punching match. 
two robots stand next to each other with either like fists or battens or knives, whatever, and they just take turns boshing each other until one of them keels over. Like it doesn't, there's no, there's no movement, there's no, there's no tactics. And as much as I love them, like all the, uh, all the um, tactical RPG Gundam games have the same problem. Like the way to win, outrange, outshoot your opponent. That's it. What Fasele did <clears throat> was especially with close range weapons, like dashing forward, dashing back, like having the, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, having the momentum to be able to shove over the other mech and then stab them, but then trying to go for like a dash shove. And if they move out the way, they can stab you in the side. Like there was actually this, this dance of combat when it got into CQC and I was all hecking about it. And so when I saw the things that um, Iron Brigade has been doing, especially with um, like swords out combat and stuff, I was, again, as we've got Brace Yourself lurking, you can't understand how keen I am for this. I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay cohesive. All right. Okay. Select character. Run. Oh, this UI is amazing. All right. Click this action to put the plan into action. Time traveling giant robots. Hey, Lieutenant. I'm still installing the prototype in my rig, so don't hog all the action till I catch up. Yes, it's not the most exciting test run of our new tech, but we've got people here counting on us, so let's move out. Now, one thing I will say is I did fall in love uh, with Giant Robot tactical games again with New Battletech, because New Battletech put emphasis on momentum. Keep moving. You know, the idea of having a firing line of long-range uh, heavy mechs wasn't viable because they're easy to hit because they're big, chunky targets. Having things that are able to get to speed and stay at speed was good. Um, however, I did again feel that, like, using a baby mech to proc the others, bring it round, and then have them come into a firing line gave you the massive advantage. Um, also, what was the... Uh, what was dual gear? Oh, dual gear made me sad. All right, so let's have a look around. What a lovely little town. Uh, Brace Yourself Games, can you confirm or deny that this is basically Space Canada? Yeah, that's right. Brace Yourself Games, I'm putting you on the spot with the hard quail. Oh, that looks so fucking cool! I take it back. I don't care about Space Canada. I'm just all about these designs. Oh, my life. All right, let's check out uh, the chunky one over here. Uh, brace yourselves can neither confirm nor deny the Canadian elements. Right now, I'm just... <sighs> Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Fucking detail on those. Yeah, uh, Jaralan, wait till you see that shield in action. Uh, it was in one of the trailers in its usage, and oh boy. Alright. Uh, plot a course further north. Alright. Execute objects to. And to the great blue Huron, what? Oh. Azua, I was saying, if this is Space Canada, and we're not denying it isn't, uh, I'm saying we need a Kaiju Moose. HQ, this is Special Field Ops Team Bravo requesting immediate repair detail. Over. This is HQ. Negative, Commander. Repair detail busy until further notice. Stand by. Cool. What could they be busy with? Well, let's see if we can't do a little more recon. Boot up that shiny new device Ops installed in your rig and we'll see what she's made of. Um, I'm going to agree with Salem on this one, though, that um, Moose are basically kaiju already. Um, 
They have no natural predators apart from the orca. It takes murder whales to stop a moose. All right. Let's boot this up. Theoretically, this prototype can predict a short time into the future, allowing us an incredible advantage on the battlefield. This could change war forever. But as long as we have it, our citizens will be safe. <laughs> Spoiler, the citizens were not safe. If she's warmed up, you should be able to see where I'm moving and flank the opposite side. Okay. So, uh, this new window, you see the corner of the screen, it's the timeline, akin to a video progress bar. You can move your mouse over it to see what will happen at any moment. Alright. Now, this is where this game shines. See, look, I'm really sorry, Brace Yourself Games. I don't mean to get overly crazy. I, I assure you, I'm not, I'm not fishing for anything. I'm, I am a person in want for very little. But I'm going to say a lot of nice things about your game. So, as I was saying, friends, like, I love giant robot games across the board. And even at this point, with the style and the art style and the tactics to it, this game is already fresh as. Like, we don't get many titles like this, and very few with care and quality. But this is where it gets flavorful, alright? So, here is our teammate. Here is the action timeline, and we can see predicted movements. So this allows us to anticipate to a certain degree. And uh, the idea being that, you know, it can only, narratively, it can only predict a few seconds into the future. Because beyond that, like, the branching timelines get too weird. But it allows us to plan our maneuvers from there. So not only does uh, not only can we follow it along the timeline here, but we can also follow just based on this unit's movement alone. So if our goal was to get the jump on them, then we now know they're heading around this ray rather than backing up. So we go through here, stab them in the, uh, the, the tactical bum bums. But if we want to meet them head on, I mean, we're going to be following what the game is telling us. But as we put through a run, you can see how everyone else is going to behave. See what I'm saying? Put that out. Uh, planned actions can be cancelled with two right clicks. No more misclicks. No more... Ah, oh, I didn't mean to click there. And now we execute. Four, four point... Four point nine seconds into the future. Feckin' we. Some surprise war games maneuver? HQ, we have an unmarked non cooperative tank at location 2SBR15. Confirm intent, over. HQ, confirm, over. Lieutenant, I'm getting a heat signature from the tank's power core. Check your prototype. If that tank even twitches, cripple it. <laughs> alright, alright, look. I want to. Who parked the bloody tank there? Look, I want to see names. Which of you parked that bloody tank? <laughs> hey, Matt. What, oh, friend? I'm finally getting into it. Without the without the the deafening noise of a convention around me. All right. So let's have a look on the timeline. What they get up to? Oh yeah, they are. Okay. So not only are they twitching, but they're gonna pop a shot at our at our commander. So if we attack primary. Seventy percent weapon effectiveness. Oh, I get one target per turn. But then Okay. Oh, so this is uh, a good old-fashioned ranged weapon. So in theory... But if 
tell you. Stop that incessant clicking. Yo, and Kandarian, thank you for gifting us up to Matt, you feckin' legend. Uh, so, okay, no one's taking ownership of this tank. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wreck it. Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Six months of pure weirdism. Alright, let's go for a little interception there. Oh, you, you can overlap movement and attacks. Okay. Okay. Oh, and Hookshot, feckin' you Thank you for six months of hanging out here, you lovely Mother Hubbards. Uh, also, uh, feel free to, like, airhorn me if I get a little quiet, because it's safe to say I'm gonna... Okay, tax can be repositioned, allowing you to some fine-tuning. Now, that's cool. Overlap, movement, and attacks. Oh, it wanted us to move down here, sorry. All right, there we go. Sorry about that. Uh, Soviet says you haven't really played an XCOM until you had a 100% hit chance shot completely miss. <sighs> oh, it is going down. Thanks, dude. And this, friends, is why you answer your phone and you park your tank sensibly. What? I'm picking up multiple targets from the north. My god, this can't be right. Take cover! Take cover! Where are you picking them up from? Alright. Oh heck, they are sending in the... Oh, they are sending in the stuff. I mean... He wants us to head back to this here, so this is working. tutorial time, but... Commander, multiple contacts just appeared on our forward slope. Weapons ready. Treat us hostile. This is not a drill. Intercept and protect the town. We're on our way. Roger, heading out. HQ, come in. HQ, do you read? Pin down by two treads. Returning fire. <laughs> Commander! Commander! Taking defensive position. The commander's down, but we have to focus. We have citizens. It's time to wreck face. There's a walker and multiple treads on approach. Remember, if things go to hell, set self-destruct and punch out so they can't salvage our prototype. <laughs> Whatever happens, let's meet at evac point R09. Okay. Wait, run. Salt, salt, salt. Eject pilot, feckin' wee! <laughs> Alright. Okay. All right, so we're going to pull back to start. I 
and then give them something to worry about. Um, oh, so... Stammering was asking if there's going to be full mission replays after this, and Matt was saying that not yet. Mission replay functionality is definitely on the roadmap, though, but it's a big technical challenge with how every shot in the game is physically simulated. Yeah. All right. Like, I do not want to cross this open field of hell death. Alright, so let's get shotgun and shield. So we'll get you round this way. And just... Now, can I stack... Can I stack shield and fire? No. Okay, so shield is just uh, an ability to allow me to, to soak a little bit of damage. That'll be good. To get you closer. Well, excuse me, excuse me. I do like that I can rearrange for each one for, for cinematic badassery. Um, uh, uh, the Conclave says, I wonder if the pilot ejects spawns a tiny person who you can get to run around out of the battlefield. I mean, uh, front mission gun hazard and. Oh, son of the assault suits, VTOM. No, not assault suits, VTOM. Uh, the. Oh my word, where's my brain? Oh, um, Metal Warriors and its uh, its precursors. Uh, those games, those games, be rad as hell. Um, and it's, you know, the ability to jump out of your mech and actually fly around in those was great. Uh, I'm a Volaster, so I'm sure if I like uh, that kind of fast-moving mech. Uh, it kind of worked in Hawken, but still. Oh, my word. Okay, sorry, no. Uh, I'm a Vola. I apologize. I didn't mean to get Elitist there, and that is on, my, that is on me. Um, fast-moving mechs have been very successful in video games, and... Hawkin gets brought up a lot because I know a lot of people had a lot of hope for it, but honestly, Hawkin's failings weren't anything to do with the speed at which units moved. Um, Hawkin lacked weight and had a very, very strange gameplay for the business model they put up. Whereas Heavy Gear, especially Heavy Gear 2, uh, the balance between speed and um, functionality was handled very well. With the idea that, you know, essentially much like a jet bike your mech could use high-speed treads to move very quickly through the battlefield, but you had no left and right. You could only kind of sort of steer around. Uh, and then when you disengage those treads, you move more like the heavier, like, high-power armor suits. Um, and it worked great because the kind of, like, speed versus maneuverability was a very, very interesting... was very, very interesting, to say the least. Um, I'm still not sure what really happened to Heavy Gear as a franchise. I think it just ran out of steam. As Satan says, obligatory Phantom Crash. Oh, yeah. And Phantom Crash's combination of, like, stealth mechanics uh, and more, like, high-speed mechanical flavor. So we can choose winter. All right, let's see how this goes. And go for like a, a pop-up pirate style. 
As Soviet says, halfway between normal turn-based and real-time strategy. Well, the the catch-all is simultaneous turn-based. It is a turn-based game per se, but the idea is everyone sets their movements and then pushes go. Also, Matt, I, you know, I knew you just said this, but it needs referencing again. The fact that you know Metal Warriors makes me very, very happy. Um... All right, let's see how let's see how Pop-Up Pirate works in this. All right. How's Matey Boy doing over there? Yo. Uh okay, that mother hubbard is down. All right, so you're up first. All right, that one is inactive and crashing, so we need to move. Let's move our, our first Mother Hubbard slightly out, followed by a nice little. A nice little round of attacks, and then shield up after that just to give him some fire. Uh, as for our friend here. Oh, do we have to choose the the angle of the shield? Okay. All right, so we aim the shield towards who we're blocking. Oh, Matt's also saying uh, something cool for execute mode. You can press spacebar to slow time. Oh, you better believe I'm doing that next. You better believe, what? Well, because what we'll do uh, is we will run our other character around this way and back up our friendo. So we'll go attack secondary. No, actually, no. We will not. We will attack primary off the bat. Once we get around to here. How about you? How about you? And then, just do a quick cheeky readjust. I will say, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't expect my um there we go, that should help a little bit more. I didn't expect uh, video editing skills to, to come into effect here. Um God, I actually feel like I'm planning this through. Sorry, that was a really asinine thing to say. <laughs> All right, what we're going to do, friends, is we're going to institute um, enforced conversation between uh, matches. Because I don't know if you've noticed, this is already grabbing me by the by the intellectual short and curlies, for lack of a better term. And the reason being is I actually feel like I'm planning this through properly. I don't feel that I'm waiting to use... Uh, like whichever specific um, like abilities or mechanics will will do the most. I feel like I'm actually planning it based on all right these buildings, that incoming fire, how the tanks are moving. Um, as I'm sure you well know that with a lot of giant robot games, the meta becomes very apparent very quickly. Um, front mission is all about skills. Like honestly, it doesn't really matter the robots that you use so long as you put the right pilots with the right guns like um heavy uh, heavy gear uh, front mission three there's a skill where you have a chance to fire again with machine guns so you get a guy with two machine guns and you get him to train just that skill and nothing else and then so he can just pop up in a gunfight and just shred even like high tier mechs like it's no big deal uh there's one where uh shotgun with 
punch weapon at close range, you get an extra hit with the other. So you dash in, punch, and then jam the shotgun up into their ribs. But that can proc twice. So you can be like, shotgun, punch again, shotgun again. You still have to reload in that, but... Yeah, anyway, let's give this a shot. All right, here we go. Oh, my word! Fucking yes! There's our shield mate just letting loose with a shotgun to the face. That is so fucking cool! Alright, let's have a little let's have a little look see. As this tank careens over the corpses of his dead mate. Like it's no big deal. Here comes the other Mother Hubbard. Yo, so that tank actually managed to dodge my shotgun shell. All right, shield up! Come on, show me, show me what you got. Shield Friendo is not having the best time now. So I think what we're going to do. So how's that one doing? Okay, that one's nearly wrecked. Alright, what are you going to do? You're going to head over here. Oh yeah, also, as Bracing Health Games was saying, that building is wrecked. Oh, it's super toast. But, on the plus side... I'm not saying this little town needed a Wendy's, but, or for the greater Seattle region, a Dick's. A superior hamburger, if I might add. Now I want, now I want the Bergs. Okay, so this Mother Hubbard's just going straight in. Hmm. Where are you going? All right, so you're first up. I, we just need Like, attack right off the bat. Because you are going to need to cheese it over this way. So I should be able to get a couple of shots off like that. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Curb stomp the tank. Uh, with our other cadet... I think we've just got to shred this Mother Hubbard as quick as. And also make a break round this way. Because those other two tanks up there, there's no way we're crossing the, the no man's land of that. So I'm, I'm, I'm good. Cheers. Oh, wait, no. They are going to bump into each other. This is bad. Alright. Oh. Alright, so. New plan. Gonna head this way. But instead of that, we'll double up on... Uh, primary weapon. 
And then from here, yeah, get us around this way. Regroup over here. And in theory, in theory anyway. So we got that one, that one, and then we'll get you over here. See, I'm learning, I'm learning. Okay. Oh, I'm a Vola. We beat a tank to death with another tank. Uh, Vanderbeast is asking, are we, go are we gonna be able to name the mechs? Well, there was something about um, at the beginning which it mentioned seeds of games. So this may have more of kind of a, uh, a mech worry, a mech warrior. Oh. This may have more of a, um, an XCOM style like plan and strat. Which I'm entirely okay for. Alright. Let's give this an execute. Because these tanks are just opening fire across the empty area. This may not be quite enough to shred through it. I think we're just going to have to stomp on a mech. Ho oh ho! But shoddy too hotty over here says not today! Oh, they're going to have to bury you in a soup can. Um, uh, friends, I, I'll i be honest with you. This is not making my rig do anything scary. Like, Blackout Club is more strenuous than this. Shield mech's doing all right. But it's just, if these two... If we can't get into cover down here, these two bad words are just going to spend the rest of this little tutorial just shelling us until it stops being funny. Like, the thing is, friends, I've got a CPU meter, like, down here. And it is not freaking out. Which, like, pre-optimization is pretty feckin' rad. Also affect that one tree in particular. Oh! Dear this people's house, I'm real sorry. I'm real sorry. These kids are just gonna stay. Oh no, they're going for a little. Uh, they're going for a little uh, tank jaunt. All right. So shoddy too hoddy. I reckon we'll get them to just destroy this one, and then we'll head back around. So my feeling is we loop back around through the city and wreck some tanks. Um, I mean, I'm not saying... I'm not saying that there's going to be a lot of new affordable housing in this obviously not Canadian town. But I'm thinking it real loud. It's going to be fine, everybody. It's going to be fine. Alright. Yeah, we're definitely going to need to... Oh, okay. I'm learning. So I'm like, why is my heat meter going through the feckin' roof and we're taking so much damage? It's because some dingus, who shall remain very nameless,
may or may not Yeah, some dingus who may or may not uh, be named might have been overheating his mechs beyond uh, a shadow of a doubt. got an idea and exo i'm sure it's all be fine what ho good afternoon how are you doing uh, i've got giant robots so ah, get the heck online. out of me girl weapons online all systems nominal all right Might how be... the time does fly Gil, how are you doing, friend? 23 feckin' months, you legend. I, I hope you like giant robots, because we've got giant robots. I'm just getting my feet under me for Phantom Brigade, uh, and then I'm going to keep nattering your ears off. Because we haven't even started talking about feckin' uh, Metal Marines, which is the most bizarre... Okay, bizarre's probably the wrong term. Through there? No, it's a little too small. I think it's a very bad spot. Right. Uh, so, Gil, I hope you are having yourself a splendid Tuesday. You might have noticed that Will has the throngs of giant robots distracting him left, right, and center, and I will probably need to take enforced banter breaks to chat with you all in between, lest I become too lasered on this. <laughs> Vanderby says, overheating? Psh, just attach a giant cooling tower to the wheels of each of your mechs. A little like, uh, a little like wheelie, uh, a wheelie healy, uh, unheedy. No, I got nothing, I got, I got nothing. the theory. Okay, there we go. Right. Uh, so, um, actually, Gil, I don't know if we've discussed it too, too much. Oh, and one of our mechs just lost their leggies. Um, but currently, um, the early access version of this is just available on...
Uh, currently, this is available on early access on the Epic Store. And it is feckin' rad. Um, I believe it is going to be getting a Steam release in the future. Because um, I'm sure I've seen the Steam page of it. Uh, and as soon as we have solved... As soon as I have solved giant robot problems right now... Okay, let's give that an execute. All right, tank down. All right, how many more units are up left? Uh, there's one disabled, but it looks like the shoddy two hotties when he's clearing through it. Uh, and Matt, uh, thank you for, for chilling and uh, answering questions. Uh, I usually pride myself on being more conversational and informational when it comes to things like this. But giant robots... your leggies but you're not doing terribly so you can limp and then just hang on you can limp and then attack primary there we go and let's get that for a nice a nice slow motion kickoff over here because this is going to be dope In super slow motion! <laughs> oh, but to, um... To Gil and, uh, I'm a voler in peeps, if you are gonna pick this up on Steam... Okay, so good news, bad news. Bad news. The tank is not dead. Good news, we will not need to redecorate that bathroom. Because I just took a mech shotgun. Thank you! That's what I was after. Um, yeah, please do give this a wishlist on Steam because that's the best thing you can do to help a project right now. Uh, and uh, Ian Feathers, I I'd hold off on MechWarrior 5 because late December there's meant to be a content patch launching. Yes! That's how we get it done! Alright, how's Limpy doing over here? God, I still remember MechWarrior 2 Mercenaries, which would let you continue if you, have a if you had a broken leg because you could jump, jet, bounce around. Ah, oh, good times. Oh, there's the shot. Oh, first two squiffs wide. Oh, but it's that last one. Head on. Fucking yes. Oh, 
What did we win? Valiant heroes! Maybe don't land on that leg. I kind of broke it in there. Okay, you're fine. Uh, Matt was saying, have a uh, hangout. Uh, I mean, you're always cordially invited. Because uh, I love talking biz dev, game dev, the whole shebang. Stop um, that incessant <laughs> clicking. <laughs> you feckin' terrorist. Sorry. Someone from House Carl just gifted a sub to uh, Rami Ismail, who, despite being on the show only one time, has been one of our longest <laughs> subscribed individuals. Um, but yeah, Matt was pointing out that uh, the realized folks playing on stream is this game has a nice cadence between plan and execute. It does. And I don't, despite other titles being very turn-based, it doesn't feel as, uh, I don't know. It doesn't feel as face pressured as something like, uh, Battletech. lost so much devastation this isn't what i wanted for you i thought you'd be born in a time of peace and prosperity of love among people but the world is so different now tanks patrol the streets neighbors turn on neighbors People disappear in the night. They keep telling us this is temporary. That we'll come to love our new way of life. Somehow, I don't believe them. I want to give you the freedom I once had. But how can we few do that alone? Max. Dope giant we robots. Keep hope alive for much longer. We pray that someone, anyone, will answer our call. Yeah, the power is giant robots. Surprise, jerk face! We're gonna get you a sword. <laughs> I think I get that mecha sword. Makes love swords. Uh, actually, Gil, I do want to agree. Like, the the visual style is super, super clean. It's not quite full on, um, like, shaders and pastel, but it's very clear to read the environment, and I'm really grateful for that. I do feel that um, Front Mission 3 was so cluttered because it was the first time they really got to do the stuff they liked in a 3D environment. And I feel like their environment artists just went haywire. Because, uh, if you don't know, Front Mission 2 was a, was a real-time RTS, you know, like build bases, all of that stuff. And so Front Mission 3 was a return to the original, but with a 3D engine. And as we saw with a lot of like the PlayStation 1 games where suddenly creatives got this whole tool set of 3D stuff they could do, they went feckin' wee! <laughs> Throw it all in! Feck. I mean, Front Mission 3 was as deep as a trench. They had their own in-game internet with like functioning bulletin boards. And I don't mean like there was like online. I mean they simulated bulletin boards throughout the conflict of people like posting about what happened. In some cases, what you did in battles would change the postings, and you could find like hidden dark. Oh, I'm so good, so good. All right, campaign mode. So, um, welcome to early access. Pressing Shift Tab will open your bug reporter. Let us know if you spot anything. We shall. All right, navigation bar. Switch between menus. Uh, 
Cosmos World. Overworld map view and faces. World information bar shows you the change time speed. Displays territory information and also view resources. Uh, so widget presents information about your objects in the world. Uh, mobile base. Yes. Yeah, mobile bases. <laughs> Grins in MechWarrior 3. All right. Continued intel. All right. Now, your base of operations is a giant vehicle capable of storing and servicing entire squad of mechs. At your disposal, the brigade can avoid enemy and strike at the moment's notice. Left click the objectives to select them. Okay. So, mountain base, garrison level 2, hope of defeat 50, salvage. Alright, let's have a look at our base. I'm sorry. Firstly, forgive my swears. I'm going to need a fucking moment. This is awesome! It's a legit mobile base. Oh, this is fucking cool. All right, let's see what we can let's see what we can customize before I start losing my fucking heck sideways. All right, so this is a and to make it visibly aesthetic, it goes into the slow mo mode while we're choosing stuff. I knew I was gonna love this. I knew I was gonna love this. Seriously, I said it to the, um, whoever's behind the, the Brace Yourself account, and Matt, I'll say to you, I can do anything to help or be involved in this in any way and shape. You just yell at me. Beckon. Yo! <laughs> yeah, this is the, this is the long ship on wheels. This is the long train. Alright. Uh, body. Okay, so equipped parts. Standard torso armor. No equipment currently available. Oh, just in case you wanted to see more more pretty stuff. can see friends just how many how much we get to do with this feckin yo this is amazing okay i will admit i'm thinking like the 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 strong red arm but it does also make us a massive target so left arm is city a But if we go for kind of like long ship colors, like the red and the blue, find us a nice strong, uh, a nice strong blue for the uh, the other arm. Yeah, use the ocean as the accent. Upper body. No, I said hella red. Hella red. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I had to double click there. I apologize. Oh, hell! Holy crud! Oh, uh, Brace Yourself Games. Um, uh, we have links just for subs, but if... Um, uh, do I have Moose or any of my mods kicking around? Um, if I could get a wave, then um, they can share the, the one for you. Because um, I know I should be paying better attention, but... Like right now, I just 
just realized that I can do this as two different setups. And that's heckin' cool. This is feckin' rad. <laughs> oh, the mobile base appreciation. This is so feckin' cool! And I know it seems like this is just um, wanton ranting about like a cute little feature, but this has so much weight to it. This is the shit that grounds us into the story. And it's so infrequent that we discuss it, especially when it comes to XCOM, that for XCOM 2's ridiculousness of like flying battle space super base that the fact that you could actually see its interior you could see where everyone lives and moves and works that giving it that weight that grounding is what gave XCOM 2 so much and here we have it our mechs don't suddenly just pop out of a magical van and be like hop, 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 hop. you know uh, Gil was saying like the white base thing and I don't know if I'm getting too into the weeds here but you know the fact that white base was so well explored gave size and weight to these giant robots even when they're in space where there's nothing to balance them against all right i'm gonna try not to spend too too much time oh that's cool if we want to just do it arty farty style uh we can do it Okay. What's it? Uh, left arm? Yeah, left arm. I guess we'll do left arm ocean for both. This is a very good base. Uh, Gil says, uh, please go hard. All right, well, let me show you what we've got access to. So, like, for the upper body, we can choose one paint scheme for the whole of the torso, but then we can go into the minutia. So, we can choose, like, one for the torso. So, that if that black and red's a bit too extreme for me, so I'm going to get it to Officer A. So, we've got kind of like a... It looks like we've kind of stolen this. Uh, and we can also do something with the crotch region if we want to make it a little more um, uh, pronounced. But then, if we want to go just like funky fresh for the head armor from there we can we set the base and then change the components and uh, we also get to choose right item left item keeping that blue and red thing going on oh, feckin details on this is gorgeous <laughs> Feckin' yo! Thank you for throwing that over here. I know you're probably dancing between a lot of different um, uh, Phantom Brigade streams at the moment, but feckin' yo! Feckin' yo, thank you, alright? I mean, it all helps, yo, it all helps. Um, so, to, to put it into perspective, we get um, right arm broken up into upper and lower. So up arm, upper armor here, like lower armor here. Uh, and for the items, they're currently as one. And if we jump back here, we got this. All right, let's check out our other unit. Because I don't think we have any... Like, I don't think we currently have any more... Additional, we haven't picked up anything to swap it out with yet. But it goes so far as let's choose, like, you know, uh, cartridges, internal structure. Like, the details to which we can customize these is feckin' rad. It's interesting because we played Mass Builder a few weeks back, and that definitely felt like. Gunpla Dynasty Warriors. This feels very much like everything I hoped a new Armored Core game would be. And I, I do apologize, like, uh, 
Phantom Brigade is obviously a strong enough game to stand up on its own. I feel that we, in kind of like hardcore giant robot fandom, don't have... Actually, I want to change the feedies. There we go. Uh, I feel in we in giant robot fandom have so few titles that we bring our stuff together. Uh, we end up compar doing comparisons so frequently because we don't have a lot of titles to draw our narrative, uh, sorry, our descriptive language from. But I also feel like, and I'm, I don't mean to dunk on other titles, but uh, especially with Front Mission, as a fan of that franchise, I've wanted something very specific from those games for a long time. And they continue not only failing to deliver that, but giving something that's of lower quality in other spheres. The last two Front Mission games have been dreadful. And I don't mean that they are poorly made or poorly produced. I mean that both have missed the things that made that world something special. Both ignored what it was that people like myself really wanted from those titles. And here I am getting to play that. Kind of, kind of a big deal. Not gonna lie. get to my other units. Moving them out to pilots. Okay. So have Polaris, Foxtrot, Kilo, and Tango. Sephir, Lance, uh, the Slefnir is who we customised. Okay. Okay, so we have one whole unit, we can name them. Lance looking good. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do with pilots. Uh, so Polaris, edit. Okay, so we have portraits available. So we get to choose name and call sign. Oh, hells to the hells, yes. Hells to the hells, yes. <laughs> oh, sorry, um, Artyom, I apologize. I missed your comments. I kind of getting a little bit wrapped up in the game you made. So brace yourself, Artyom was saying, uh, glad you like it so far. I really appreciate your feedback. On the subject of this virtual mode, it's there to uh, literally enable free camera. Current camera is based on the footer buttons as placeholder, but eventually we'll be able to spin around your mech. That's feckin' cool. I mean, honestly, apart from seeing the back of my mech, I, I didn't find myself wanting for there. So we can randomize all of that. Anyway, where were we? Ah, oh, yes, back to the mechs. Oh, yeah, I have to click any unit, sorry. So here we've got our, our big chunky shield lord. Gonna spend so much time just digging into this. Oh, this is glorious. Okay. Oh, the editing socket was back up here. It's rivalry. Something different. Let's go for Bubblegum A. Uh, just because... Uh, actually, which one's... Oh, no. We're going to go for Bubblegum B. Because it's the closest we've got to the kind of the, the Cubely style. Or Quibbly, or however you want to say it. Which is still one of my favourite designs. There we 
we go. Oh, and um, again, brace yourself, RTM. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if uh, you're a, you may be a couple of seconds behind stream-wise, um, but I found that out, and I'm going to do another battle because I don't want. Oh. me just a second dear friends that should bring it in okay because uh, there's something I'd like to test with you all for a second if that's all right Give me a second. So, uh, there was something I've been wanting to test out with you lovely Mother Hubbards, and I think this will work nicely. Um, Twitch has given us this thing called predictions, where we can guess as to the... Well, you can guess as to the outcome of something that's going to happen. And I haven't had a chance to try it yet. So, I don't want to start naming pilots until we've had one run through because in the past people have have literally given bits to have characters and mechs named after them which i absolutely i'm fine with bribery like you're literally keeping myself and the nuggets alive but i don't want to do that until i've had a chance to have a proper fight of this so let's give this a shot So, I've put in a little, a fun little game into this one. So, you lot can guess whether or not I'm going to beast this next one, or whether or not it's going to kick my ass. So, you can predict, you can predict to the, the tune of however many mead points you would like, whether or not you think I'm going to beast the next fight, or whether I'm going to get completely and utterly wrecked. It's not bits, there's no money involved. It's just like a mead points versus. Oh, also, Beadora, what ho? I have missed your lovely self. I hope you are doing glorious. Eagle lives, what ho, friend? How goes it with you? Willing outcast, what ho, friend? Uh, Alex Wavery, I don't think I said a proper hello. I think the, the call of the giant robots suckered me in. Ah, uh, see? You got faith in me. You got faith in me, Gil. <laughs> Okay, okay, this feature might be awesome because you can see that it shows who thinks I'm gonna beast it and who thinks I'm gonna get obliterated. So yeah, like, nom nom, Ian, Gil's with me. Eagle's like, ah. <laughs> Eagle's like, well, after that comment, it's a stretch to call me a friend. Get me to insult you. Yeah, but we work together in the trenches. We've seen the fire and the fury together. Like we have we have gotten in it. <laughs> 
Alex is like, you did not say hello. You are a horrible host. All right. Wait, is it stop letting you? Uh, is it stop letting you bet on this now? Sorry, I have to not call it betting. All right. So. Oh no! Okay, so people can still can still predict, right? It just it stopped doing the the, the party wipes. Okay. So twelve people think I'm gonna do it. Seven think it's gonna be a, a full on crush. Absidapan says, uh, "Why is everyone predicted?" Oh, Absidapan, we're experimenting with a, a Twitch feature to see whether or not I'm gonna be able to to beast the next match. Holy shit, it's been two and a half hours. All right, um, friends, I'm going to leave the the gorgeous giant robots up. Actually, let me get you a nice... It's like a distance view. No, I think that might be the prettier angle. Yeah, that's definitely the prettier angle. Um, I'm going to just fix myself a copper while you have a crack at it. Uh, sorry, Beardora was just saying, uh, I like how you answered two of my comments in five minutes and then realised we hadn't said hi. But I've noticed that it's something that I've done repeatedly, and I'm sorry about that. Um, it's not. It wouldn't be the first time you've popped on up and I've done a terrible, terrible job of saying hello. Where's the banner? Oh yeah, there's, there we go. So friends, I'm just going to go fix myself another cuppa, then we're going to do the first proper mission. Uh, you've still got more time to uh, to predict on whether or not you think I'm going to beast this one, or whether you think I'm going to get myself crushed sideways. Um, aww. Uh, Absidapan and uh, Alex calling me out for a bad host. You know what? That's fair. Alex, Absidapan. Or what ho, friends? But, I don't want to say it too loud in case I wake her up, but Absidapan, look who's here. She got an extra long walk this morning, uh, so she's just been having, like, power pro snoozes. And Lord Lost and Found. What ho? So, alright. I'm getting a copper. Don't do anything interesting while I'm gone. And then we're getting back into this, alright? Alright? And eight.
apologies for the wait, dear friends. I was uh, confronted with a, a bunch of very, very hungry guinea pigs. And let's be honest, between River and the guinea pigs, they run this town. Uh, Vanderbeest, thank you for refilling the pint glass while I was away. Okay. Okay. Let's have a look at the world. See what missions we got going on. Uh, mobile base is our first operation potentially. Uh, actually, Clank gets weep, weep, weep when it comes to nuggies. Okay, short range scan, some supplies, some parts, a little bit of subsystems. Uh, just unknown parts. Alright, well. Oh, that is cool. So we get like a kind of a functioning overworld. Oh! New beginning! It's time to take back our country. We should start with the mountain base, the last outpost that belonged to the Phantom Brigade. We still have some spare supplies and parts to get us back on our feet. <laughs> Clegg's like, weep, 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 indeed. It was my mistake for rustling a bag, and then I saw that the Nuggies had gone through all their hay, and I was like, all right, here we go. Man, Lord Lost. Easy win! You got this! Alright. We got unit and lance, but if we survive this fight, I will be taking uh, requests for pilots and recommendations for, for mech names. So I also, um, I don't know if we have any of the Brace Yourself team still chilling and illing, um, but earlier on when we were um, starting off the game, it pointed out that you could choose seeded builds. Now, while there does seem to be a narrative that carries through this, is this going to be similar to titles like XCOM, where the, the content and the fights, a lot of that is procedurally generated? Is it going to be following linear missions closer to, like, front mission gun hazard? Or is it something you can talk about at this point? I'm more curious. Also, Deus Watto. Yeah, Lord Loss. Oh, heck! <laughs> From the world of Warcraft, two giant robots! We are under raid by worm-riddled pirates! Let us show them the true power of giant robots and awesome! But also, like, Viking raid defense. But also giant robots! <laughs> Oh. <laughs> okay, Thor. I I was lurking on your uh, your Warcraft streams, and it looked like you were having a great time, friend. But yes, you have streamed for twenty four hours. Go sleep. Go get some bomb ass naps. Uh, I've got a uh, indie simultaneous turn based giant robot action to show your your lovely pirate crew. Uh, also, friends, if you are not, please follow Go Pirate Software. Um, for those of you who've come over from, like, Brace Yourselves, so Go Pirate's an indie team based out of here of, uh, well, the, the Washington area, and, uh, they're doing live development of their game on Twitch, and it's feckin' fascinating. Um, I wholeheartedly recommend it. And for those of you who just joined us, this is Phantom Brigade. Uh, it's currently out on the Epic Store, but it will be available on Steam in the near future. Oh, that's a right good-looking base, that is. Uh, I'm only seeing... I'm only seeing two hostiles. Like...
This feels bad. This feels bad. Um, but yeah. It's been nice being able to live vicariously through Thor doing um, a whole bunch of the World of Warcraft stuff. Oh. Yeah, over here. Giant robot. Sorry, I completely forgot my uh, train of thought because I just got into robot brain mode. This game is called Phantom Brigade. It's currently on the Epic Store in Early Access, but it will be coming to Steam. If you're waiting for it to come to Steam, please go throw it a wish list um, as it will help the devs out directly. And if you are unconvinced, let me let me show you why this game needs to be on your heckin' radar. Alright, there's no time for cowardice. We've got to show off to some pirates. I don't think this base is going to come out of this okay. Oh, oh, Daramaniac, how are you doing? And I should have said a proper hello to uh, to shocking uh, Shinks as well. That's a difficult one to get your get your words around. Sabio so says, "Question: uh, Will it have dual play land mode, where?" Uh, one plays uh, the mech uh, team and one plays the tank defenders. It could be interesting. <laughs> Alex being like, you know who has it on their wish list? That Viking blonde guy. Yeah, don't don't listen to him. He's 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 a bit of a weirdo. All right, so let's get this party started. Except for in super slow motion. Oh fuck. Please miss, please miss, please miss, please miss. Oh, ho, ho, ho. get good tanks! Woohoo! Yo! This is the six o'clock news in your anchor Thorbatuk. Today's top story: after an exhausting summer, Humpty Dumpty has a great fall. Um, I'm gonna need to. Uh, I'm gonna need to get a moose no specifically for Nom Nom Fighter, but also Nom Nom. Thank you for the two dollars. All right. Let's see. Oh wait, so we already wrecked the left track. That was a crazy Sensors online. Shot. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hello, it is I, the best resurrect caster in all of Xif in my living room in a week in my apartment, taking over my girlfriend in that job. Oh, well, Rikami, thank you for 13 months, you feckin' legend. I, I feel a little dense in the subject of, like, I couldn't tell you the difference between... Like, uh, I couldn't tell you the difference between... Actually, let me move that forward a little bit. There we go. Um, I couldn't tell you the difference between the varying types of healers and casters and whatnot in the final Final Fantasy XIV sphere. I vaguely remember my my Warcraftian nonsense. Oh yeah, Beadora. I do appreciate the like we were um, 
I forget who it was that pointed out earlier, but both the clarity in terms of the environments and the UI as to what does what, I'm very grateful for. Because there is also something to be said for... A lot of uh, giant robot games do put a lot of heavy lifting on on the user to learn very, very complex UIs. Like, so there's a kickstarted giant robot game, which is closer to uh, Valkyria Chronicles than it is to, like, Front Mission or Battletech or things like that, uh, called Dual Gear. And I've been following that since its announcement. And it's insistence on having a very very unintuitive or a very very specific type of ui and design philosophy puts a lot of the opus on the user to learn well stuff and things oh, let's see if this goes down we can just set ourselves up a nice camera angle and just watch this all play out I don't think that second tank's long for this world. So when I say stuff like, you know, commenting on how intuitive this game is and stuff, I'm not just blowing smoke or throwing some like pointless compliments around. Like it really does matter. Ourselves our first little. It did not like going from the heavy pistol in slow mo. Might have run those systems a little bit hot there. a little bit hot. Uh, Wondery Gamer, thank you for the 100 bits. So saying, I refuse to let the stream end with that Lamad Jim 2.0. But then again, I'm a streamer. Well, I do, like, <laughs> I do accept bribes, dear friend. And if we are... Man, that autocannon's just shredding phase. This is bad. Alright, so what have we got? Uh, we've got one mech inbound. Rifle and pistol. And that is it. Alright, so... Yeah, I'm going to need you to... I need you to wreck this guy. And then in the words of in the words of Professor K, get on the bounce. Let's see how this goes down, shall we? So the idea is of basically putting our shield unit there as a blocker, but not shield up, with the hope that as they run past, we just go kaboom! And Beadora, I don't think we're the baddies in this. I think we might actually be the goodies for one time. It's entirely possible. Oh, so Rakami, I apologise that went that, oh, that went way over my head, but thank you for explaining. Entirely required. Entirely required. Would you like to do a murder? So first things first, shot that tank in the front because it it had it coming. 
run through an explosion. As pieces of person and mech hurtle through the air. Oh, Pun Spectre, no! I'm not reading that out! Pun Spectre, you can't make me. But thank you for the 100 bits. Ah, uh, see, they're firing off that shoddy too hotty too early. Fool of a toque. And then bring it back into slow-mo. Oh, cracking shots there. Willing Outcast like, I mean, everyone thinks that they could go in their own story. I'm not saying I disagree. Uh, I will add that, um, you know, I've I've played Vamp the Masquerade. I, I, I'm under no delusions when I am the baddie. right at the start and then shields up all right I think we're good to go oh no that first attack put that in there then put that in there all right let's do this can't have much left. His legs, one of his arms is nearly shredded, his legs are nearly fecked up. Uh, Kami saying, I love the, the simulation of the shotgun pellets. Well, I think the over-exaggeration on the visual effects is so that we can clearly see who's shooting at whom. Because this is all happening in real time, so it needs to be nice and clear. Like, the tanks aren't firing, like, you know, laser mortars. But it visually lets us know who's shooting at whom. And I think that's really important. Also, real handy. You'll notice the projectiles lose their, their visual effects once they impact. So if you're missing, you can see by, like, how much. Oh, sorry, I overheated that. Why am I a dingus? Can you just shoot this person in the bum, please? Oh, here we go. The shotgun execution. That's a category worth. Oh! We might be the baddies. I don't wanna... Oh God! He's already dead! Wow. So it turns out the Canadian Special Forces do not fuck around. Forgive my language. Uh, just moves like, did we just commit a war crime? Again. I, I think we are... We are no-holds-barred guerrilla warfare at this point. See, Havoc Poppy says I don't think that pilot's going to see tomorrow. But... Bits of him are probably going to end up in next Tuesday, so there we go. All right. Got my first real win. Go me. All right. Duration. So that fight took place over 20 seconds. Uh, we took way more damage than we should have. We didn't lose anything. Okay. So let's do sight loot breakdown. Oh, we've got a tank. A 
avoid fully destroying enemies to increase chances. Okay, destroyed, no salvage. Destroyed, no salvage. Destroyed, salvageable equipment found. Parts, uh, body part L1. Yay? On-site inventory. Okay. Go us. All right, this isn't just a handy mountain base fully... This isn't just a handy mountain base where you can recruit pilots and build smoke screens. You can also use the mountain base as your fallback post when necessary. If you lose all your units and pilots at any point, you can fall back to this base and rebuild. Retreating gives you a new squad with essential equipment. Same level as the highest province you control. Cool. Now that thullum has been uh, liberated, you can start making your way to the capital. All right. Uh, Post-combat routine. You can recover some of the equipment from combat to salvaging. The base would need to remain stationary, leaving it vulnerable to attack. It's a caution. It's vital to remember that repairing your units and swapping out your pilots to rest them. All right. Taking a few hours to salvage. Uh, manufacture a smoke screen. Smoke screens are wonderful for avoiding combat while being attacked. How much in the way of resources do we have? I don't know if we... Do we have enough to... I'm going to assume yes. So yeah, essentially, we've got like a somewhat save spot. Although we might have to defend this area. Oh, and we get to pause time. Now, firstly, to those of you... To those of you that had faith... Where's my little... Uh, so we're going to choose... So to those of you that predicted I would win this one, we're going to do choose outcome. Uh, what are those chances? Easy, you got this. Complete prediction. Okay, complete prediction. All right. So for those of you that predicted I'd actually be able to do this and not be a complete fecking dingus, I managed it. Oh, wow. So Lord Lost and Found got... What is it? See details. Okay, so there was 6k mead points that went to Lord Lost and Found and a bunch of other details. <laughs> Hindle's like, I remember how XCOM went. I mean, it's not unfair. So Domino says, uh, I should have just bet the fam on blue on this one. Who knows? Who knows? We didn't know how difficult this was going to be. Oh, we can't do uh, repairs and changes because um, we're, we're locked in doing salvaging. All right, so we just got to... We just got to regular time it. We've got like four or five minutes. Hope we don't get jumped by anything. But now we have our own little mountain base. Oh, actually, that was one thing I was going to ask. Um, with the uh, the areas and faction, uh, the areas that we take, will we be able to rename them? Because my first instinct is to rename mountain base to white base. Because Gandams, I really like Gandams. Okay, salvaging has been successfully completed. Okay. Pause here. Go check out. Oh, uh, initiate repairs. Takes time. Takes time. All right. So I'm learning. I'm learning. So we don't have to repair them, but we can. Oh, Hindle, go get some sleep, friend. So we got about, f well, the equivalent of five. Uh, Okay, there's not second to second. Alright. We're getting our mechs repaired. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Oh yeah, that was the... I wonder how many units we get to a squad max. Or, like, at what point we start constructing additional. Because we've got... 
two mechs and four pilots right now, so we can rotate them out to avoid uh, fatigue. Though, according to that, that fight lasted 20 seconds. Which I won't lie, feeling pretty good about ourselves. According to this, we picked up an upper body unit. Oh, okay. Alright, inventory. Two heavy shotgun, a standard assault rifle. Oh no, we picked up an extra pair of ladies, which we're already using. Okay, I'm learning, I'm learning. So it says the maximum number of points a viewer can use in this is 25, it's 250,000, bloody hell. Oh, Willing Outcast is demanding a rematch on that last one. Hey, if you, if you all want to have another test at that betting on the next one, we absolutely can. Although it's, it's not betting, it's predicting the outcome. Because the mead points don't turn into anything that has a, a value, so it's just... It's more salty bet than... So what is your current equipment? Right item. It's a burst assault rifle. Oh wow. That is a uh, so it's down on base damage a lot. Left item is a heavy handgun. Kinda of tempted to swap it out for the for the shoddy too hoddy. Ah oh, no, it needs to be a sidearm. Oh, Katros, have a wonderful rest of your evening, and I hope I got to show you like a good deal of this. I know I've not been my usual conversational self, but you know, this is front mission meets Mech Warrior 3 with time travel and the core battle being basically like for Sele for grown-ups. I'm I'm here. This is a game I have wanted for a long time. Um, one could lament the sadness that we didn't get this from franchises that had much longer runs. I mean, feck, remember when um, Armored Core made an armor, made a, a, a mech management sim? Do you remember that? Oh, good times, good times. But I don't see anything to be doing right now. So Kilo and Tango are fatigued right now. We may need a, we need a quicker way to be able to swap pilots. Oh heck, and um, friends, we were gonna... <sighs> we have two mechs and four people. How are we doing this? How are we doing this? Because I can put another, you know, do you think Will's going to win this? I can put that up. I can put it up for 20 minutes. Oh. A uh, Dismuquato. Um, have yourself a lovely evening and a lovely rest of your sleeps. Uh... Ian, I I have a feeling that this will be more closer to how Room 2 was. How we did like little spots of it as it did content updates. And then once it got closer, we're doing a whole bunch. Alright. But yeah, let's de- Is it weird I want to do another round? 
I, I like <laughs> I like seeing how much your little faith all of you mother hubbards have. Alright, so start a prediction. Does it keep what we got? Alright, so start a new one. We'll do 20 minutes because I want to faff around with mechs and have a look. Well, Beodora, I'm glad we got to hang out with you. You know, you're under no obligation to to come on by, but I miss you when you're not here. So enjoy your, your manga readings. Mech and yo. <laughs> and Autozine, what ho, friend? Welcome to Phantom Brigade. We've got mechs. All right. So once more with feeling, do you think I'm going to win this next fight? Yes or no? Winning two for two or a full party wipe eject now? All right. We get to have a faffa boot with that. Uh, MDH says apparently I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed what? Also what, oh friend? So, I've got two robot names and I've got four pilots. I will be accepting bribes because Puckett's got to eat. Uh, it might be, maybe it doesn't work on mobile app. Okay, and Beadora, have an excellent rest of your evening. <laughs> no one's like, I swear to bath a bit if you lose this next match, I'm going to sulk so hard. But I'm not trying to. Although I've got to admit, there's currently 30k mead points on a victory. To, at the moment where I looked, to 20. So if I did lose, one person's going to make out like a bandit. This is going to drastically change the DAB economy. Okay, it's five, it's five people now. Ark of the Conclave's in. 44k up against 140. I I take this as a I take this as an absolute uh, compliment. J Post like I don't want you to lose, but I'm taking long odds towards a dab. <laughs> okay, I gotta learn how to uh, shift pilots around. Ravenger, what ho? Navalis is the dab economy is something I never predicted I'd hear. Well, I kind of set myself up on that one because the idea was meant to be the dab was so many points that no one was ever going to use it. Whereas a lot of you have now taken it a large amount of time to save up the points to make me stand and make an idiot of myself. But the thing is, I'd never want you to feel cheap, so I'm not going to turn it off because most people were halfway through to saving it. Oh, Havoc Puppy's got a thousand mead points on the win. All right. Uh, and J-Post, so this is a regular truck, but at mech-sized. And yeah, Farbles, you're entirely correct. The game's made up and the points don't matter. They're entirely imaginary. Like, I wouldn't want anything like this involving 
bits because that's one straight up gambling. And yeah, I I try and think of it more like anything involving bits is. I, I like doing things that are thank yous. If someone chooses to like bribe for a giant robot in this, I, I I take it as like you have thrown in this to keep everything going, but if you want a giant robot name, then you can. You know what I mean? Uh, Orderzeems. Oh, is, uh, is Steam having a bad time? <laughs> Willing Outcast, that is the most British thing I have heard all week. But I do understand. I do understand. Alright. So, I, I don't know how to change... Okay, so you've still got you've still got time, dear friends. You've still got time. Well, uh, to the real hunter, we'll just have to see how it plays out. And at least you know with friends with giant robots, there's never a chance of me trying to throw it. I'm, I'm emotionally invested. So, what have we got? There's another... So there's a patrol squad, and then a Varsan village. It'd probably be better for us to hit the patrol, and then the village. The village is a slight step up from what we did. The previous fight was a, was a, was a level one. Ne the farms are two, patrols are one, the other village is a three. So let's get out and move. Oh, what's this? Station reserves patrol squad. Oh, what's this? A fort? Make your couch. Let's do this. Military structure. Military structures are usually more challenging than roaming squads or occupied settlements. However, they also store better loot and units with better gear. Feck yes! Let's do this! Oh, feck. So what have we got? Uh... Three mechs and a baby tank. Oh, good news. I just need to move you up to here. Okay, maybe... Maybe this, this might be a challenge. Oh, because we have to wait until a designated time. Alright, should be able to drop that first one. Okay. Alright, 
let's see how this plays out. So we've got two shield mechs, uh, two shield mechs. Oh, here comes the good stuff. Okay, this really does remind me of video editing. Is that weird? Is it so you wait until Wait until there. Then we start booking it around here. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You're definitely getting like will focus mode right about now. All right. So, we're going to keep up the movement around here. Try and just keep hitting them with big shotgun blasts. Give them, give them enough things to worry about. And maybe not get obliterated <laughs> all at close range. Because I've realised that that last fight, easy peasy, you know, brush off the dandruff. But that was two tanks, one mech. This is one tank and three mechs. And we are only two. So... Oh, but that first one's having a very bad time. Uh, and they do take friendly fire damage as well, which is kind of nice. Uh, it wasn't quite enough to shred this first one, but should be enough to get us out of trouble. And I love this kind of like skip into slide with the heavy shotgun. That was the shotgun pistol. Oh wow, and they're going to just keep going. Alright, well, it's an old two can play at this game. our lovely robots doing the thing they need to do. Hopefully, if we can keep up this, like, high-speed shenanigans, we should be okay! But I'm starting to get nervous, I won't lie, I won't lie.
okay, friends, I don't know if you saw that, but that shot ricocheted off the rooftop there to avoid our unit. Alright, the subsequent shot still hit, but... Oh, this is making me nervous, this fight. Okay, I don't know if you've noticed it's starting to play the sad music, which is worrying. Uh, I think maybe because our other pilot's having a very bad time. Let's see how this plays out, shall we? Uh, also, Lord Lost and Found, Wato, Kestrel, how are you doing this evening? Wato, hello. I am giant roboting it up, and honestly, this game is amazing, and it keeps basically stealing my uh, my attention fully. Really hoping we can that this. I don't cock this up entirely because I've realised a lot of people have put a lot of me points on this. I'll be honest with you. There is, there is pressure. Sir, sir, why did you fire at that one up there? You were meant to shoot at the tank that was coming towards you. You know what, I don't need to see my failures in slow motion. Okay, okay, so how are we doing? Alright, we're not doing as bad as I thought we were going to do. Not moving? Are you just gonna? Are you just gonna hang out there? All right. Wow. Sorry. The the mix match kind of editing styley of this has me thinking like a lot, a lot. Do you know what I mean? So a poor big chunky mech is just overheating massively. Oh, I'm gonna get everybody killed. Bad of beast, thank you for filling a pint glass.
Let's have a look at our secondary unit, who is doing a run. And right about now, we should hopefully be able to obliterate that person. All right. Um, so yeah, Kestrel, sorry for the, the new weirdness. It was something we had a, uh, we're having a little test with. It's a new little like backend feature where basically you can decide, you can predict the outcome of something with mead points. So we've been doing it like, do you think I'm gonna win this fight, yay or nay? And then people put in mead points and one side wins, one side doesn't, and the, the, the winnings are distributed amongst. Um, it's, the only thing it's gonna affect is the, as I called it, the dab economy which is a term I didn't think I'd get the chance to use. All right, let's keep the slow-mo because I feckin' love it. It's currently, um, it's currently a Twitch thing. Come on, this tank on it. Oh wow, this tank's not taking, this tank's taking barely a scratch. This is not going well. Wait, what? No, you sp the shot he goes at him! The oh, you're gonna be the death of me. I must be um, incorrectly targeting things when I'm firing. Yeah, it's gonna be time for the run and gun. a lot. Having a bad time. Having a bad time. Alright. You're good. You can you can do the the dance of the devil here. You. You need to run this way. Actually. Uh, you're about to lose an arm either way. teams together where we can. Okay. Uh, alleged Watto? Uh, no, this is an enemy base that we have jumped to try and get extra goodies. And this may be the point at which... Uh, I realize that I've bitten off way more than I can chew in this game. So we're about to find out. In super slow motion! Yeah, you better run, buddy! But there's still two more mechs out there. Uh, and that tank, which is doing far more than I thought it were gonna. Oh yeah, you better put your shield up! That shield's coming off. Woof! Good shot, good shot. Oh, someone's taking some. Oh my life, they got me through the gap in the building! I needed that arm! That was a really good arm! It was an alright arm, who am I kidding? Alright, but we took out. Did we take out their shield? We did. Oh, we are actually fecked. Uh, our other mech just lost its main weapon. Oh, we're having a bad time.
So our plan to obliterate this guy is toasted. So that's crashing. Uh, you've only got... Oh, wait. Melee? Second. Army friends, but this may be the end for Zombie Shakespeare. Uh, so no, no. Uh, how? How? I'm, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna be sorry. I'm gonna be sorry. But who knows? We could we could clutch it. We got one mech down. We'll bash that person in with a shield. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe shot, uh, maybe melee attacks in this world are very powerful. Okay, so what are the other two bad words? Uh, there's one there, one there. All right, so yeah, getting to getting to clear is not a terrible idea. As for you, I do not think our other pilots coming out of this are right, but we got this. Yes, push him over. All right, other tank is toast. Oh, uh, sorry. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Sorry, I'm I'm so wrapped up in this. Uh, in case you couldn't guess, this game's fucking great, and is making me a terrible conversationalist. I know here I was. I was like, I'm gonna talk all your ears off about Fasale and fucking um, hell, even Metal Wolf Chaos and Armored Core. Oh, okay. So I actually need to, I actually need to limp, limp back a little bit, so that I can then like 
There we go. So I can then collision strike that person. You. I need you over here. Alright. Let's give this a go. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Frendo is down. Frendo is down. Oh, I've got good news, bad news, friends. This is not going to go well. Oh, feck. I'm going to try and get us out of here before we start taking them. Yep, that's the bad times. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Sorry, jumping back in, like... I mean, alleged more Titanfall would be good. I felt Titanfall did start to shine in the second game, but... Like... If Apex showed anything, it's that what made Titanfall shine was its movement and, like, moment-to-moment -moment gunplay. Um, maybe I'm just an old fogey in this one, but I did feel like, especially the, the giant robots in it, I did feel they were very... disposable. Does that make a weird sense? Ah, feck! And a fearless, I can't comment on it in any official capacity, but EA did not trip over themselves. The, the success of um, any of those particular products has been in spite of EA's attempts. Like, you don't just forget Battlefield 1 is coming out the same week as your main product. It's been interesting to see the sabotage they've done to their own franchise with that one, but I feel there's internal politics in there that we'll never really know the truth of. <sighs> no, no, I'm sorry. I should be angry. I'm just disappointed. Oh, I can't believe I got wrecked in my second match. Okay, so first things first. Uh... I want to point out, friends, I want to point out that 95% of everybody who put in a prediction thought I was going to win that one. So I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. <sighs> the mid points are distributed. I'm gonna go claim the no faith in world club hype. Oh no no no! There's uh, no time for a bet at the moment. We will have to get back to we'll have to get back to mountain base, repair our kit, and go from there. So we have no units left. Uh, what else can we... Alright, pause. Hang on a sec. Because it said that if we lose everything, we can go to Mountain Base and get new robots, right? Oh, this is cool. Insufficient funds. Oh, I might affect this entire run. <laughs> I might affect this one entirely. Oh. 
Uh, Iron Marcus, I do understand there's going to be a really high chance of a dab of shame. Oh, uh, so Riley's saying, at the moment there aren't clear instructions to get your mechs back. You have to find a patrol and engage in combat. Then it'll trigger a game over state and you get new mechs. <laughs> Satan's like, more betting! Alright, so let's give, a, let's give that a shot. Because I, th I think we can come back from with a couple of standard mechs. I just, I, I bit off way more than I could chew with the fortification. Uh, so was it? Fall back to Mountain Blaze to escape them. Okay. So fall back was what I needed to do. So we skip drastically forward and then we get some mechs. Okay. Wait, Varbles made 3k more for a double dab. Alright, so let's have a look at our units. Alright, the base is restocked and ready. I am saying note that during the time the other places have set up. Alright, so what have we got? Uh, so we've got unit 343. Uh, I haven't actually learned how to set pilots. Um, uh, Riley, you seem to have uh, spent a little bit more time in the campaign than I have. I haven't worked out how one assigns a pilot yet. Havoc says, I wish to best the rest of my mead points. Uh, hit the big minus on the negative next to your mech list. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right, so we've got... Hotel, you're in. Foxtrot, you're in. All right. So are you saying you want to do one more round of... Can will can will take the next fight. All right, and uh, definitely gonna see what. So we've got a heavy combat shotgun. Got anything available for left item? Medium handgun. No, that's literally all we can have. So we've got a shoddy and an assault rifle. Oh, and Riley, thank you kindly for the, the pointers on this one. Like, I've been looking forward to this a lot, but all I played previous to today was the uh, the show floor demo of this. Uh, caffeine, I have hydrated, and I've had some Battlestar Snackalacticas uh, in between. Uh, but friends, I am going to need names for our robots. Um, and, okay, Havoc and Ian definitely want another round. So there's going to be plenty of Faffomancy. So we'll start another prediction. Chances for the next fight. says main one of the mechs R2 destruction. No, we can do better than that. Uh, caffeine, uh, end of semester horror, while a terrifying battle cry is a little bit too um, long-winded. No, we are not naming him the famous! Uh, uh, and currently there's no lighter mech right now. Uh, also, I'm starting the prediction now. Uh, you have 15 minutes to make your choice while I'm putting the mechs together. Uh, so they're both semi-identical. 
Uh, first unit has an assault rifle. Second unit has a shoddy two hoddy. Uh, I'll see if I can name the first one Duke of London, but that might be too too long. No, the Duke of London is in. Right. The Duke of London being our uh, assault, our assault rifle mech. All right. Someone is betting 10k. They think I can do this next fight. Uh. <laughs> Kestrel, all of you are terrors. Terrors, the lot of you. The Duke of London. How it probably wants Yorkshire tea for the second mech, and I'm kind of. Oh, uh, Ian's gonna spice the pot. I can yo. Mech name Kablemo. Wow. Okay, the real hunter has left himself with a single point of mead. Oh, the Duke of London and the screaming cuppa. I kind of like the screaming cuppa. Because you can hear me running to the kitchen going, ah! Go well, what I can see, friends, is that, like, next time we do something like, um... <laughs> Okay, Nugs of Fury. Uh, the Duke of London and the Nugs of Fury is a great tag team. Uh, Jarolan saying, next mech, Hot Dog Fingers. That's that's the the Blaseball commemorative mech. All right, let's see how um, let's see how Nugs of Fury looks. Okay, the Duke of London and the Nugs of Fury, that, that's too good. Alright, so we don't have anything to, to change too much. Just going to change the, the art style. Uh, the red mechs were not sturdy. I For some reason, the Duke of London being like uh, Acid Lake makes a weird kind of sense. like that uh, green as lower body there we go that's kind of stylish digging it digging it and then nugs of fury is going to be one of the oranges um although jaron i am thinking hot dog fingers for one of the pilots Havoc's like zero mead points left. Oh, I see you like to live dangerously, friend. No, we're not calling it Salad Fingers Clank. Salad Fingers... Uh, we got we got out of the 90s. We're okay. The great thing about Salad Fingers is we never have to go back. Although, can we just take a moment to appreciate that uh, trans flag colors are off the bat. You can just have that. Oh yeah, Sunset Light A. That's that's Nuggy colours. And 
There we go. What? I'm an old nerd. Like, I accent color on the right shoulder. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Matt's like, trans rights, baby! Giant robot says, trans rights are human rights. Oh. Sometimes when I'm very drunk and on my own, I try and think about how to solve all the world's injustices with just giant robots. Obviously, I've never solved that problem, because by the time I reach any kind of conclusion, I'm shit-faced. But it's always a nice little thought exercise. Uh, oh, and Sailor says it looks like vote indicators don't push train icons off of visibility. Yeah, now you're at three icons. I guess they're only temporary, so it would probably override things like uh, VIP and stuff like that. Maybe? Uh, but yeah, sorry, what I was going to go down on another route was that I can see us using this uh, prediction thing for like, you know, like depth and stuff like that. So you all can, you all can choose like if you're, if you're pro shark or anti shark. I think we can have a lot of fun with it with those kinds of days. Or with like um, the, the fight clubs and stuff. Uh, Iron Marcus has bet everything they have on my glorious comeback. I best not feck it up then. Oh, Salen, is it weird that I actually want to play more depth? I, like... I'm fucking terrified of it. And everything about that game is my great nightmare. Like, I was shaking afterwards. I was not okay. And yet, the core of that game... Okay, oh, let's check the workshop real quick. Okay, part build. Okay, part build. I think we should be saving our points right about now. Ah, uh, okay. So, we still need some pilot names while people are getting stuff together. Oh, and Salem says it's not weird, it's good. Always down. Okay. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, I loved Subnautica, despite it giving me, like, some of the biggest spoops I've had in video games. I think that's something that really shines when a game is glorious and engaging and wonderful, despite its thematics being things that make you uncomfortable or even afraid. Like, that's a really good sign. Uh, Clank's asking me if I like horror films. Um, I mean, sort of. I find with horror films, I'm more angry if they don't deliver than I am. Like, there are great horror films, and then there are, they're so bad you can have a good time films. But all of that big gap in between, I find myself irked because I feel like my time's wasted. And I don't get that with a lot of other mediums. Like, if I read a horror book, and it's not very... It, it, it doesn't hit hard. I don't go, psh, damn, that was a waste of literature. I don't know what it is. It's not a comment... I'm not saying the medium is wrong. That's just a comment on me as a person. Uh, Iron Marcus says, I'm also pretty sure... Uh, uh, Double Zero Gundam was premised around a very good idea. Oh! Yeah, it did get weird, but um, no, I I think that's why I ended up watching so much of, of Double O Gundam or Double Zero, however you call it. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the premise, friends, um, the it is about uh, an organization that tries to end all war by having the most powerful Gundams. Like they basically state, "You can't stop us. We will intervene in any armed conflict. Resolve your differences elsewhere." Oh, Havoc was saying prawn suit only, so not a playthrough is the best. I 
don't disagree. I actually managed to grapple hook one of the big um, dragon leviathans and use its momentum to hook shot myself across the fiery areas. But I had kind of gotten my, uh, my courage by that point. But I love, absolutely love the big submarines. Building that and driving it around is one of the most satisfying moments in any game. Uh, Salem says, I'm very done with the either they were dead the whole time or the Fight Club style twist. Uh, Fearless is looking forward to Below Zero leaving early access. Me too. Like, I was gifted that well over a year ago, but the Longship have requested that we wait until, like, that we wait until it's at content complete. Anyway, you've all had enough time to bet. I've had enough time to get caffeinated. Let's head back to the world map. So. Here's the question. Are we returning to the same fort as last time? Or are we hitting this station reserve? Because on the one hand, if we were playing this sensibly, because look how much of the world we have to, to retake. On the one hand, we have all of this to try and beat. So the smart move, the smart play, is to hit the patrol, get a bit more kit, get a bit more XP under our belt, then hit the four. Um, yeah, the station reserves is definitely an easier fight. Squad level two, garrison level two. So, as you lot are the ones that have put mead points on our victory, uh, Ian saying gank the patrol. your choices heard friends but jumping back to Sadelands the whole they were dead the whole time fight club um I've also found that oh god what was the one I watched what was the one I watched where I was genuinely grumpy because I felt like it just stolen a whole bunch of my time so it's kind of like an emotional horror where these two people go to look at a house and then they could never leave so they get shown around this like boring kind of like semi-detached house in an empty area it looks like a new build kind of suburban plot and then they can never leave they try driving away nothing uh they try digging walking they're just in some kind of i don't know um i watched the entirety of that film expecting some uh, very clever unfold and the result of it was absolutely nothing Oh, Zuo says we should uh, become giant robot cattle branches. Yeah, Iron Markets, like, I don't want to go into that because I've known some people that have played Stories Untold and have had a great time with it. Um, I almost feel like you should pick a couple of the stories, bits from Stories Untold. But then again, I can't throw shade. I was in a series of horror mini games where I was a fragmented part of an alien consciousness in someone's head who turned the world squishy and cute. All right. Uh, Ian's the only person that's had like a really strong vote. Uh, so we're gonna head towards the reserve patrol squad. Now, does this count as the next win? Does this count as the next victory or loss? That is the question that you, you'll need to decide. All right, so we're gonna be deploying the Duke of London and the Nugs of Fury. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Oh, now we're ready. Alright. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is just a 2v2... Heck, this is just a 2v2 interception. Also, we can dash now. Nugs of Fury, you're up. What does a dash do? Well, that could be fun. Extra shoddy, shoddy too hoddy. On at the end there. Don't mind if I do. All right. Let's see how this little this little dance of robots plays out, shall we? Get those jump jets going. Oh, uh, havoc! If I'm not being my usual conversational self right now, honestly, it's because I'm having so much bloody fun playing this. Like I'm having to to focus on not just. Like lining up all the the little like the timelines for violence. Oh, Zenro! This is a simultaneous turn-based giant robot combat game, and it is awesome. Feck him up, Nuggets! Uh, sadly, Nom Nom, you did miss the last round of predictions. I, I had it up for 15 minutes. Mess him up! Okay. Kablam! There we go! Ho 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 ho! Didn't he like that? How's that for a slice of fried gold? Oh, two for two! Lovely rest of your day, right? I'm gonna squiff that shot. Oh yeah, and fearless, that's a really good point. Like, um, I remember you saying, and it does absolutely hit true. That um, the jump jets, the movement, the way it kicks up dirt at, at, at key points. It really does give you that feeling. Sorry, one of the things we were talking about earlier, because someone was saying, like, it's a real shame that, um, oh, what's it called? Not Havoc. Hawkin didn't uh, do better. And the more we talk about it, like, the more I do think, well, Hawkin is by no means bad. And I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't suggest it is.
Um, I wouldn't suggest it is by any means. But with Hawkin, they didn't have the, the weight. And I thought that was a real, real shame. Do you know what I mean? Hawkin never felt like the, the, the epic, grandiose battles that it was. It felt light, um, closer in line to... I don't know. Oh! Oh, have you ever seen someone shoot a mech's bum out? By the nine! And the slow motion weight of this just conveys so much. Jesus, what happened to that guy? Oh, he ejected! Check out the feckin' pod! Dude, don't shoot him out! Stop shooting! You've already got it! those good news, bad news kind of moves. So we can run alongside. I don't know what to tell you here, other robot for other robot person. You've kind of made yourself a little bit of a bad mess. Well, I do say so for myself. My name's Michael Kane. Not a lot of people know that. As for you, until you get up until you're your nice, your nice high spot. You just gun down, matey boy here in the bum. All right. Now, did we decide on whether or not this is the the match that counts, or is it the next one? Sorry, I'm too in love with the slow mo. I know I should. I know I should take my time and not do nothing but slow mo action battles, but I'm just all about it. Uh, I am Marcus says, I vote for this one since you're winning. <laughs> Clank's like, I made a bad bet. Hey, I'm asking first. I'm asking first. Oh, a catfish. I didn't see you sneak in there. What, ho, oh, friend? Uh, alleged, uh, sadly, Hawkin is not around. Um, it, it went for the free-to-play model, which was not a bad move, but... I don't know. The giant robot scene is very much about customizing and making something your own, whereas their design around their giant robots was closer to, like, hero shooters. And I was I think it was a harder sell. Uh, and Zuo, I would absolutely have watched uh, Michael Caine in bloody Pacific Rim. How are you feeling about those shots there, buddy? Kinda looks like your legs aren't gonna last. Oh! No leg for you. Oh, fuck. I say, dude, don't even, don't even worry.
Oh, uh, Darren Maniac. So this game is out, but it's early access on Epic right now. It will be coming out on Steam in the future. So if you want to pick it up later on, you can. And it's got very much kind of an XCOM feel about it. So I don't think it's unfair to say this is the kind of game we may play more than once. This guy's so wrecked. Oh! Ho, ho, ho! Don't worry, everybody. He's armless. Look, please, please just finish him. It's upsetting me. survives that long just take him out i'm not even going to slow mo it it's just oh ho, ho! that pod's gone uh mdh so that the revival mission's gone good now here's the question does that count as the as the return victory all right, so holy crud! We've got shield, standard assault rifle. Uh, got some body parts. This one came in almost intact. Holy crud! Nice. I mean, it's the same make and model as what we're using, but not whinging. Yeah, we got a bunch of goodies there. Heck yeah, I'm going to salvage. I mean, I might need to pause it. Um, so, Vader Beast and Iron are saying why, but they did vote on victory. I tell you what, uh, Caffeine, you're around. Uh, would you mind asking these lovely Mother Hubbards what they think? Uh, I'm just going to quickly nip to the loo, because you all told me to hydrate, so I did. Now I have to pee like a racehorse, because we've been playing giant robots for three hours. This may be one of those games, friends, where you have to, like, shake me into conversation. I'm not saying that it's your job to make me have conversations. I'm saying that this is incredible, and I fucking love it. I've got to hand it to the Brace Yourself team. Like, I've been, I, I've been cautiously, excessively keen for this game, and nothing about this has disappointed. Hmm. All right, friends. Oh, and Alleged, have a lovely rest of your day, all right? Um, have a lovely rest of your day. I'll be back with you all yourselves in just a second. But I gotta pee! And apparently oversharing is my thing today. <laughs>
All right, dear friends, did we come to a consensus? Was that the grand victory? Was that it? Was that the, the, the reclamation of my honor? Or do I have to go take that fall back? Uh, also, I'm going to simultaneously... Hey! Oh, well, I'm assuming that is the, the, the Jake Tucker I know. How are you doing, what ho, friend? Though, the size of the internet being what it is, it's possibly another Jake. Oh, uh, so Jake, this is uh, early access up on Epic at the moment, but it's it's bloody brilliant at the moment. I just got to get our stuff repaired. Oh, so Jake. It is definitely starting to scratch the XCOM itch, plus it has, like, some uh, procedural generation in how the, the world is laid out. Uh, there isn't yet anything equivalent to, like, the Iron Man mode, because I fecked up attacking a fort uh, and lost my whole team. Uh, so they let me... Frame... A unit build, build an empty frame. Okay, I'm gonna hang fire on that one. I don't have the ability to recruit pilots just yet. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting dis distracted. Oh, you got one of the uh, the all access epics. Well, if I can give this a crack, then, friend. Right. The thing is, I love giant robot games. I love tactical turn based and all that shenanigans. So I'm having a crack in time with it. It's it feels so good. Uh, it doesn't yet have like Iron Man or any of like the the additional features that XCOM has over other areas. But it's feckin' glorious. I tell you what, like, if you've got it, boot it, give it a, a run. I haven't even made it, like, I haven't even unified, like, the first little area yet. And, see, I loved Xenonauts, but I need to be in a very specific mood for it. Like, OG XCOM Apocalypse mood. Oh, uh, and Satan says, I bring this up because Mortal Kombat now, 11 now has a pack of skins from the movies and includes voice lands for three characters, uh, including Bridget Wilson, Sam, Bridget Wilson, Sampras, and Sonya Blade. Oh, sorry. Uh, Oddmakers gave Christian Charles Sampras, the first child of Pete Sampras, and Bridget Wilson Sampras. 150 to 1 odds to win Wimbledon when he was born. Huh. Hmm. Well, Jake, thank you kindly. Dude. I know Prime's always a pain in the ass to fiddle about with, so thank you for throwing it over here. And if you ever want to just chin wag video games, that is literally what we do here. He says, turning off the BRB needs to be Okay. inspect with intel if we get closer do we get more intel on the fort garrison level 2 garrison level 2 was 4 mechs Alright, so friends, I'm going to make an executive decision. 
we're taking the fort, and the fort will be the deciding factor on whether or not the uh, the the mead points shared up. And yeah, and caffeine. If I didn't say it already, because I'm I'm in mech brain mode. You know how it is. Um, have a lovely rest of your day, and hopefully we get to see some more of you later. I think we can do this. I think we can do this. I believe in me! I believe in us! Part of the cards! Alright, what have we got? Okay, yeah, so it's same layout. Three mechs. Let's see if we can just rush down. Yeah, let's see if we can rush this mother hubbard down. Cause the I tried to play I tried to play clever, like running loops around here. It did not work. Oh. Um well Jake, then before you crash, good friend. Um I mean I'm on here like five days a week. Though I guess I'm pretty late for UK times. I'm still, I still live on Twitter and Facebook and stuff. So feel free to DM me there, here, what have you. You know, I've, yeah. I, and I really hope you're doing well, friend. Uh, the, the, the streaming lifestyle is suiting me very well. Shazoom! Okay, how are you not toast already? Wait until after the attack. God, sorry. Uh, Jake's is doing fine. Lockdown aside, uh, I very much hear you, good sir. Though so having having this as a profession definitely keeps my brain from eating itself, which I'm very grateful for. I'm currently having a dark chocolate peanut butter cup because I'm being a terror.
what are you up to? You getting you out of trouble. Definitely ideal. Alright. Just turning us into a woodland fight. Just wreck the heck out of as many of them as quickly as we can. You're not dead yet. Very long. Just gonna use the cheeky sidearm. Hopefully we can just do it enough while we're How do they take his arm off at that distance? Beck! Very poorly. Alright, he is shield arm only, so this is good for us. This is good for us. Our guy's only got a pistol left, so... So, Becca Didlian. <sighs> Alright. Looks like it's time to just... Get everybody out of the way. How are they doing so well at range? What are they even packing? Assault rifle and shield, assault rifle and shield. Shite the bed. Oh, so they're just going for the just like jammy long range shots. Okay, so it's entirely possible they're just much, much better pilots. Got an idea. Couple of 
couple of jammy shots here we can do. Maybe we'll get lucky. Who knows? Oh, feckin' hell. Oh shit, you see that building go down? Holy crud, once all four supports were out. That actually just worked in my favor great. Because Matey Boy here has got no cover. Alright, we might be doing this. We might be doing this! God, my feckin' focus on this game is ridiculous! Just don't lose your bloody gun! Oh, that feckin' strafing fire. the back of here. Jobs are good un. Alright, execute! Wait, no, don't attack your buddy. Okay. Oh, feckin' hell. Friends, I apologize. I keep going right into it, but it's like... <sighs> There's such a... I don't know. One of the things I always used to love about um, XCOM was getting a bunch of people with, like, the grenade launchers and just shelling a building into destruction because it felt like there was this kind of this physics puzzle. It felt like there was this little physics puzzle around trying not to get your face blown off, right? Uh, and how much like damage you could do overall, you know, what you what uh, shenanigans you could conceive of. Ah yes, get to the boat, you're right. The premier SpongeBob RTS Plankton Brigade. How is this guy so tough? There we go, there's the shot. Oh, how did you squiff that? This is why we lost Canada in the first place! It gets the boat. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm feckin' loving this game if I am getting a, a little bit very into it. And I want you to know, Matt, I'm not mad at the game. 
I am mad at my pilots for being feckless idiots! Should have taken two assault rifles. Why did I take two shotties? Oh, brace yourself, games. They had it coming. Still. I find it interesting that when you have momentum going, tanks don't really stand a chance. But if you're fecking around, they make your life a lot harder. Oh, gets the boat got a new better ducky keyboard. Lovely, lovely. I've never... Oh, there's the death. Oh, you got lucky there, mate. It seems like an urban fight with that tank is the dumbest move I can pull off. Oh, you are kind of pinned though, aren't you? We could try sneaking around this way. Honestly, I think... Get you on a run with the rest of them. It's probably the best move we've got. Mech down! Yes! Okay. 2v1, 2v1. Alright, we can do this. Alright, we know that bad word's got an assault rifle. I'm doing my best! Doing my best, alright? Wait a couple seconds. Then I'm gonna dash over here. Then... We start making this guy's life a little bit more difficult. Oh, and to Bez uh, Bezio? Uh, thank you kindly. Oh, where door? What ho? Where door? Where door? And hopefully we can just pour on enough. Oh yeah, that took all of the... Oh, there we go though. There's a few shots on target. Or not. Grubble, grubble, grubble! Oh, slow mo, if you're gonna be a dingus!
we go. Okay, here we go. Alright. One mech lost its legs, but it's okay. We got this. We got this. I mean, we'd have it more if we were good at shooting, but okay. Oh, no, we don't got this, do we? We don't got diddly. Okay, better than nothing. this whole thing apart. Oh, that's coming down. Oh, that is coming down. Alright, go on. Assault rifle, back of the bomb. Do this! As the building crashes down around the tank. God, I love the slow motion. Every fight takes me 20 minutes because I don't want to turn it off slow mo. I can't help but notice! He's kicking you! How did you lose your arm? You need that! Alright, perfect. We had a good run. We had a good run. Matt, the mean points were gambled. Okay, that's not crashing. That's death. Um, in the words of a very well known Queen song, having a bad time, having a bad time. <laughs> I skidded and fell over. I skidded and fell over. Fucking hell, that tank hit so hard. I survived this long. Uh, so sorry, Team Toadhouse, how are you doing? I hope you're having a lovely day. Um, the uh, Brace Yourself Games team gave us a copy of this yesterday, day before, and I've been, I mean, it's giant robots, turn-based, gorgeous art style, like what's not to like. Might be a bit of a fan of robots, shocking, I know. Oh, and get to the boat. I hope you have a good time with it. Uh, sorry, um... Uh, get to the boat got their copy of Ready Player 2. And, you know what? Have a good time with it, friends. Like... Actually, I'm going to answer Dat Breezy's cost, uh, question first. We'll come back around to that one, because I do like talking about it. Uh, Dat Breezy... I am probably the least biased individual to ask about this because I love giant robots. I am a huge fan of XCOM, Front Mission, uh, for sale. Like, you can start pulling mech games out of the air. I've played them. I'm having an incredible time with this. And I'm, I'm having a great time with it at this stage. So if you ask me if this is worth 30 bucks, yes. But that's... That's me. I 
I mean, feckin' hell, it just looks gorgeous. Oh. Though, I've basically, I've been trying to do a battle that's way out of my comfort zone, and I'm getting my ass kicked. Punch him in the face, Nugget! Where we limp. I'm amazed we're still in this fight. Oh! -ho -ho! Though bumping into that guy with jetpacks basically allowed us to avoid the tank, which has been doing a lot of damage to us. arm's gone. We've got nothing. We can go ahead button, but... Okay, yes, Matt, I did lose that collision, but the impact of it knocked me off, so the tank shell whizzed past the, my ear. Also, I don't think they're... Uh, I don't think uh, Sam Oswald's coming back from that one. Oh, the look at that! I'm glad it lets it that, that last turn play out, you know. Oh. Well, some peeps are going to have a lot of mead points after this. A bit, I also, uh, that means we've got a few of the devs from Brace Yourselves just chilling and illing. Um, intermittently popping in to see how we're doing. So if you've got any questions on the game proper that my idiot self can't answer, we have actual creators of this game. Uh... See, the thing is, Matt, I don't feel like I got hecked by RNG, and I don't feel like I, I was ambushed by things I didn't understand. I took a shotgun into what ended up being a ranged fight. They just had assault rifles, so they had no reason to close the gap. So my poor one-armed bloke trying to get in there to, to blow some faces off just didn't have a didn't have a shot at it. Oh, I gotta get good. That's the thing. I gotta. Got to train. Got to work towards it. So, um, that, if you don't mind me shortening, uh, I really enjoyed Battletech, but I did find that it fell into a lot of the problems that um, a lot of mech tactic games fall into. Whereas I call it like most damage longest distance if you can outrange your opponent that's it that's all you need to do outrange out damage and battle tech was a little better but you still had what a uh, little tactic i like to call pop-up pyra where you have a large amount of overwatch and you send a little unit in to go woo at full tilt run past everybody get them all riled up and then have your back row just be like i'm sorry did someone order a lot of missiles yes that's a lot of missiles blah, 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 blah. so on and so forth um, the thing that's been great about this, which is one of the reasons why I love an old tactical, like, simultaneous turn-based game called Vesele. Uh, was that... Because things happen simultaneously, you have to do a lot of... Oh yeah, we had to... We have to go back into Fight Street, then game over. Um... Because it's simultaneous turn-based, you spend a lot of time guessing what's going on. Oh, yeah. Disengage. Oh, do we have to go back here? Okay. Because we're out of pilots and robots. 
but I, I I found there's a lot more a lot more variety. Uh, recruit a pilot. Not time to expand just yet, because we'd need a robot to put them in. Oh, also, uh, those of you that that thought that I could win it, that I could thought I could recover from the damn shame. Hey, and Matt, it's no worry. Like, it's early access. Bugs happen, yo. I, I have a background in QA, so I guess I still have that ability to draw bugs from the earth. Uh, but I do need to give victory mead points to everyone that thought I was going to stack it. Because I stacked it. Now wait for the shame. Wait for the shame to pour it in. But it's fine. I mean, I might, I might re-roll on a new one to see what uh, what um, if we get like a new seed or things like that. Um, but yeah, uh, that the other thing that's worth mentioning is the overworld of this is closer to things like XCOM. There's more procedural generation rather than battle text like cool. I guess I have a million trillion missions to do. I, I found that unless you really, really new like pre-clan invasion battle tech there wasn't really a lot to do there wasn't really a lot to do in the galaxy if you didn't particularly love certain factions and wanted to work for them oh and Matt's saying the first two provinces will be pretty fixed for tutorial flow but the rest of the map is seeded okay Oh, and Vanderby says, uh, I'd point out you weren't clear on which fight we were betting on when we registered our bets. That's fair. Well, a lot of people just got a lot of mead points. Oh, no. I know that video. QA versus uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Or peanut butter and jam sandwich, if you're being uh, properly English about it. Uh, that did me a damage. Oh, get to the boat. Hell no. Sorry, uh, get to the boat was saying that they just drunkenly ordered an elite controller. Uh, I got mine given to me by the devil. And I'll be honest with you, like, it's glorious. Uh, it's made Spelunky 2 so much easier. I didn't hate my old uh, 360 wired pad, which took me through Spelunky 1, but... Yeah. But I tell you what, I'm going to try your idea of crashing into a patrol. Because I know there's a patrol up this way. Uh, enemy territory. Since your homeland fell, the invaders have built military bases and reinforced settlements. Invaders may counterattack. Proceed with caution. So this is where we're overwhelmed. Fall back to the mountains and escape. That's cool. Base is restocked. We're ready to go. Let's have a look at our units. We will need un new unit names. We've got Whiskey. And we've got Juliet. But I think this is good. This is a nice little challenge. And, like, Matt, I, I don't have anything to comment on at the moment uh, in terms of like balance and stuff but I am enjoying this try and retry one of the things that no one really talks about especially with um, Front Mission 3 was that it was kind of standard to just play a mission until you got it you know what I mean like that's just the done thing I'm so not ready to beat this fort though so I am going to take the game's advice and just pick on some, like, broken down convoy. Maybe the patrol squad, the farm, just, like, start growing. Uh, oh, and BZ, thank you for the good questions, because it helps me feel like I'm actually hosting rather than just monosyllabically playing giant robot games and ignoring you all. 
Um, <laughs> Beans is asking if this is Unity or Unreal. I would guess uh, Unreal if you had to put me on the spot. Um, but it could be Homebrew. Oh, no! It's Unity! Whip, whip. Will fails again! God! Alright. I'm a little worried now about painting it. Because the thing was, I was going to do one of these mechs in kind of like, uh, in trans flag colours. But now I'm worried because if I get that obliterated and destroyed, it doesn't send the message I want to of support and... I also have a feel a few friends would never let me forget it. Uh, so Matt says, Unreal was a good guess given we're on uh, EGS, but uh, they don't discriminate. That's a good point. A subtle subtle red for the first character although again we'll keep doing the like hella accent on the arm and then I think we'll go for another another nice blue for the second unit This game's so good. And I'm honest, like, I went to the bathroom and I kept trying to think of ways that I could, like, self-insert myself into this game. And I know I made that offer to, to Ryan and whoever was behind the, the, the Brace Yourselves, but, like, this is so good. Like, this is feckin' rad. And Matt, I really like that idea. Um, one of the things that I've done personally is when I play a lot of uh, XCOM 2 is even if I play it at low difficulty, I play it with Iron Man on just to get me into this like, like win loss, where losses don't feel like the end of the game, it's a thing you recover from and you fight back with. Do you know what I mean? Um, I like the stories that come from campaign games like this and often you need games that have a, a potential for loss to, to really make it work. At least that's my humble opinion. Um, the thing I was saying about Front Mission, especially Front Mission 3, Front Mission 3 is a story game. It's damn near a visual novel in between, like, building, working on your mechs and, um, like, actually being in battle. There is as much time you'll spend reading dialogue and chatting. So, in some regards, it does make it feel like playing and replaying the battles is kind of in tune with the rest of the game. The game wants to tell you a story, and the robots are part of that. Whereas, XCOM lets you make a story that is yours. Does that make a weird sense, friends? Uh, oh, and Matt was adding re-fallback. It restocks you at the cost of time. You might lose some territory to counter-attacks, but we want to encourage people not to save scum. This will come more in later when pilots actually gain experience and perks, not just from their victories, but from their defeats. Hey, I'm down for that. Um... River! River, what's wrong? Sorry, friends, will you excuse me just a second? I just want to make sure the dog's okay. I'm not even going to pause it. This isn't even an official break.
Sorry about that, friends. Everything is a okay. Uh, where were we? Where were we? Um. Oh, and uh, Matt, that's way cool. Uh, just I guess on the XCOM that they did the same difficulty down to avoid a bit of feeling penalised by bad RNG, but do Iron Man to preserve the importance of the decision they make. Yeah. Uh, though um, the XCOM 2 run that we did here ended up being um, I, w I wouldn't say so far as mimetic, but close to like we I, I had it so that everybody who sub got a character of them and some people who have been really really big good friends good supporters uh, got just evaporated in the early game Definitely gonna need more colours. We'll go for go for sunset B for this one. There we go. Oh, sorry, I missed uh, a question there. Oh, so get to the boat. Uh, do you mean the the newer series they put out? Uh, I think I've seen some ads on it. I, I, I don't have um, HBO or things like that, so I haven't had a chance to give it a watch. Dat Breezy was just adding, uh, they're totally drawn to mechs, but I've never been able to figure out uh, why they'd never be useful in real world warfare, even in a multi planetary future. Um, my advice would be there is a wonderful series, um, both a TV series and uh, movies called Pat Label, and that's probably one of the most in depth with real world economy reasonings for giant robots. Um, that would be my recommendation, especially the second film, which talks a lot about like the geopolitical reasons of why giant robots are not just existing elements. All right, we've got a team. Uh, probably need some names for them. All right, definitely gonna need you new uh, giant robot names. Oh, um, uh, 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 BZ, uh, it's Pat Labor. Um, it was one of the original projects by, um, Moriyoshi, who went on to do, like, Ghost in the Shell and cool shit like that. Um, it initially starts as a TV show that seems very kind of like, uh, 80s, 90s cheese, and then has a bunch of films. Uh, do not let the art style of it fool you. It's, I mean, Pat Labor 2 is one of my favourite films of all time because... You know what? I'll, I'll let you experience it. I wholeheartedly recommend. And uh, as Matt was going into details about like the art pipeline and style for this game and how it manages to to look fresh and sharp for Unity is incredibly powerful if you know what you're doing with it. And let us not forget that like games like Tarkov and stuff like that are made in Unity. Um, Unity's reputation for the style of projects it makes does come from its early price point and ease of use. You can get up to speed on a 2D project in Unity very quickly, and if you're not paying for the full licensed version, it has that like, you know, made in, made in Unity screen at the beginning. Oh, 
Okay. Okay, so I'm going to come up with some names. We're going to have... Uh, it's going to be... The mechs have to be something of something. So we're going to have uh, Dabs of Regret is the first one. And the second unit is... Hmm. Uh, Revenge of Nuggets. Okie dokie. Right, time to win back my honour. Again. Uh, win back my honour again. Oh, actually, I did mean to ask your advice, Matt, because I'm kind of looking at the unit build, um, the two unit builds and the part builds. So unit is frame plus standard issue part. So I assume that's like chess piece plus the things to go in it. Uh, unit build would just be the... the uh, the varying frame pieces and then part build is the things going in or the like, weapons and items, right? Like, I'm not quite ready to start spending our resources. Okay. And uh, we know I can't beat that fight. So we're going to take on the broken down convoy, get the patrol squad, maybe take out the farm and just avoid the sensor range there. Go time! All right. Let's deploy. I need to win back my honor. On a much, much easier fight. All right. Okay, so what have we got? One tank. Looks like it's got like auto cannons. Uh, one mech. Heavy shoddy medium pistol. Uh, we've got two assault rifles. So it's actually better for us to just wreck face. Oh, no, not quite. Yeah, it's better for us to just sit up here and make them regret their life choices. And away we go. All right. Way to go, auto cannon. I just shredded your mate in the back. Nice little happy firing lines. Alright. Let's see how this party goes. Like, we attacked the, fortif the, the fortress earlier and got wrecked 18 ways from sideways. It's like, how do you feel about people that don't agree that Neon Genesis Evangelion is one of the best 90s animes ever created? I mean, it's sure as shite up there. It it opened a lot of doors, like, intellectually and narratively in terms of, like, what you can do. Um, the thing I'd add for good old Evangelion is that 
no one had really done the uh i mean feck no one had really done a good series you could point to about people with like depression and anxiety and also giant robots pretty much every giant robot series i'd seen up until that point was like war is awesome I mean, even like Amuro Ray and characters like that from Gundam, who have who are very anti-war, you know, they're still having a great time. Um, I I do find myself talking about Evangelion a lot, I guess, because of how, as a series, it's both addressed and responded to its to people's comments and criticisms on it, like throughout. I mean, the fact that End of Evangelion is a direct response to the fans who didn't like the ending of the series is fascinating. Alright, you get first first see shootsies. ground. As for you, uh, let's, uh, we'll give this the old uh, smashing. again is uh, attack accuracy stat i.e. you roll against 75 to hit or is each bullet fired um, for that I couldn't say what I can tell you is it gives us an estimate based on where they'll be and where we'll be so kind of more like um, uh, uh, more like EVE Online that there's a sweet spot where your gun is the most accurate and does the most damage and that's where you want to be aiming to be when you're firing uh, but also your opponent's moving you're moving so it gives you a predicted accuracy. Uh, a lot, okay, it gives you a predicted efficiency, uh, effectiveness. Oh, I, oh, Matt, I feel quite proud because that's what I thought it was, and that was the that was what I got from how the game was explaining itself. All right, so they are inactive. Oh, did they eject and I missed it? Alright, give me that good, good, give me that good angle. See, from here, uh, so the way it works, so Matt, down here, uh, not Matt, Matt but made the bloody game, sorry, <laughs> BZ. So down here is my timeline. Uh, I have a timeline for each character. Uh, but as I wind back and forth, it would usually show me where the enemies were going to move. But that um, tank with the auto cannons has just worked out that it's in a lot of trouble and is sitting right the hecking heck there. So I can choose, like, as my character is going to run... Oh, sorry, my character. God, blimey, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm usually a much more eloquent host than this. As my giant robot leaps across this little teeny tiny mountain range, uh, I can choose at what point along their movement to start firing. Like, based on where's, like, optimal. So, ideally for me, I could fire here. And you see that grey band? That's the sweet spot. That's maximum damage, right? And then I line it up, and it says, Yo, weapon effectiveness. But, there's this bloody rock. So, that means that I probably might... It might not be a bad idea to take the hit on effectiveness and wait later. So, I've got more of a clear through. You know what I mean? You are going to have to run. Uh, let's go this way. Alright. Now I hit execute and all the moves happen simultaneously. See, uh, and BZ, 
I'm not going to put the opus on the Brace Yourself Games team to make this. Wait, Matt. You are, like, your team is Brace Yourself Games Vancouver, right? You're not a team inside Brace Yourself Games, because I, I I keep attributing it to to them, but I actually, I didn't read the press kit as well as I should have. Uh, I'm lucky enough to say I know Ryan Clark from, like, way back, um, so... I don't want to be misrepresenting. Anyway, but I was going to say that I don't want them to necessarily focus on multiplayer because multiplayer is incredibly difficult to create but that being said uh, one of this little game my favorite which is Fisele had an incredible multiplayer uh, the problem was no one was playing it um, and it was designed to be played multiplayer via link lead who the bloody hell sells do I know that's got a Neo Geo color pocket and a bloody cable for it? So I never got to experience what this kind of game plays like in multiplayer. Intact, no salvage. I mean, that tank had it coming. Oh, yeah, no, Kestrel, that's a very good point. You know, you can just push the make multiplayer true button in Unity, right? Oh, it looks like these units have been transporting heavy armor sets. More integrity than medium but they are heavier, which means they dissipate less heat and can make your mech slower. Uh, building a payload that suits the strength of that can give you a formidable unit. Fuck yeah, I'm gonna salvage the shit out of that. Okay, so I see what you were saying about how this area kind of trains you. Get that good, good salvage. Okay, but okay, so I'm just, I wanted to make sure, Matt, that I was, I was accrediting your team correctly and I wasn't uh, misrepresenting. Um, I, and you, you don't need to go into, into the details for myself. All right, so let's, let's get our, let's get our units and nugs repaired. some stuff. Uh, Matt says, as a multiplayer, we have no plans to add it, focusing on delivering the best possible experience for single player. Oh, hells yeah. But Matt's saying that you could set up a PvP scenario with hot seat style, with dev tools that uh, we expose players to pretty easily. Oh, Matt, okay. Hi, my name's Feature Creep. It's a pleasure to meet you. If you do that, if you do that, there is something that I would put to you. And I think I would be one of three people that would play this. Two bases, simultaneous turn-based, hot seat, like give us control of the bad guys, or have two teams on the map wrecking each other. Um, Star Wars Battlefront, no, Battlefield, Star Wars Battlefield 2 had it as a, uh, a multiplayer mode where you had two carriers moving around the galaxy wrecking each other and it was glorious. Now obviously what I've suggested is thousands of dev hours of work, which I throw away casually as I can, because I'm not dev side right now. One of the advantages about being a content creator, I can sit here with my cuppa and be like, yes, this is a good giant robot game. But what if it had gianter robots? Applause, sounds of cheering. Yes, Will's done it. Gianter robots, brilliant, brilliant. I must now do literally none of the work and put the open <laughs> on others. <laughs> uh, and Jason Long, thank you kindly for the follow. Will's being a silly bugger. Let's go wreck a small outpost. Oh no, wait, no, we need to get, wait till we're repaired. 
yeah. I will say, Matt, as one of the things of like not being dev side is I try not. It's hard. I guess. It's hard not having the same vested abilities. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. No, that probably doesn't make a lick of sense. Some days I really do miss being dev side. And who knows if I would ever return. But if I were dev side, I would be able to just be like, cool, yeah, no, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna support the heck out of whatever games that I want to because I can. Alright, so. Alright, edit parts. Oh, so what was our inventory? Alright. Okay, so this was some of the, the the stronger body parts. Oh wow, we can really start like mix and match it. Alright. So I think Dabs of Regret is probably gonna end up being a lighter unit. Oh, you know what, um, uh, BZ, they actually have a really good um, low-level uh, camera when fighting. I guess I haven't been using it enough while we've been doing battle, because I've been trying to show you, like, the, the cinematic angles. Um, but there is actually... Uh, there is actually a, a real strong. That's the standard. Oh no, there's a uh, weapons. God, I'm an idiot. Left item, right item. Heavy shotgun. Heavy assault rifles. What we're using at the moment. All right, so here we go. Left arm. So we've only got chonker arms at the moment. Uh, we didn't manage to get... Okay. Looking pretty styling there, looking pretty styling. So we then help the other mech to be more chonk and then get that shielded up and stuff. Uh, so, Dunthan, um, this is... God. Uh, how, to, how to describe it in the grand scheme of giant robots. Uh, this is closer to Front Mission and games like Battletech. Uh, although, again, it's actually its closest is a Neo Geo Color Pocket game called Fasele, which I am obsessed with. However, no one else has heard of that. And I understand that that makes me, I don't want to say elitist, because I never strive to be that, but probably sound like a right feckin' bad word. Anyway, let's get there. Get you a good pair of red pants. There we go. Revenge of the Nuggets. And you're going to be our chunker. There we go. Didn't have too, too much. But we are going to go for... Like, the firewall and shoddy works real well. And we can get a heavy shotgun. Oh yeah, and Clank, you can carry two gun. Well, you get main weapon secondary, but it, it, it rocks real well. Uh, so, Dunthin says, Battletech rings a bell that I've not played the games myself. Um, I think it was Paradox published, but Hairbrain Schemes did a tactical Battletech game 
based on the pre-clan invasion universe, and it's real good. Like, I... I, like a lot of people, found out about Battletech because of the MechWarrior games as a kid, and then went back and found out about Fassa Corp, and that time when, around America, there were Battletech stations you could go to and pilot robots against other people across the feckin' country. Supposedly, there's like, um... Uh, supposedly there's like an underground horde. Go for Sunset Dark Army A for that one. Uh, there's an underground horde of um, what should we call it? Uh, a battle tech machines somewhere in Seattle, but I've never seen them. I've only heard of them. Yeah, okay, Vanderbeast, you know what? Hipster is not an unfair comparison there. Oh, I, I was really into this specific style of game before anyone else on a console that no one owned because it was daft. <sighs> but... Oh, where was my brain at? Oh, Breezy says, uh, the Wizard of the Coast store on the Ave went to college at uh, UW right down the street. I, what is it about Seattle and mech pilots? There's a lot of them here. Anyway, anyway. Um, I feel that... Wait, did I just unequip? No, okay, cool. I was worried I just unequipped the shotty. Uh, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, th there haven't been many simultaneous turn-based games as there are. There was um, Frozen Synapse and its weird sports um, uh, sequel, which I found very odd. Um, I, I can't remember if Breach Wizards is simultaneous, but that's not even out yet. Um, simultaneous turn-based is a very complicated thing to explain. It's one of those types of video games that if you can just sit someone down and go, play this, they go, oh, oh. But trying to explain it to people, it's like, but how do you know whose turn it is? Well, it's everybody's turn at once. How does that work? It's simultaneous. It happens at the same time. Yeah, I know. But how does that work? It's like, Matt, I'm sure you've never had any problems trying to pitch this to people before they've seen it. He said, his voice thick like sarcastic marmite. <laughs> Have you ever played a, the silhouette tabletop system? Yeah, all right, Zua, I do sound like that. Anyway, Fasele was a cute pocket-style game about giant robots that kind of used like a simple programming type system. So you'd have chips, which was what your robot could do. Move forward, move back. like And things like turn left and turn right would be different from sidestep left and sidestep right. You had to fire guns and reload them. And so it wasn't just about equipping your mech with the best abilities it was kind of like getting it doing the things you wanted to you know you could get rid of move forward and just change it just for dash and just speed all around the the environment but if you dashed into something if you were heavier you pushed them and did damage but if they were heavier you just bounced off them like some embarrassing toddler in a scrap <laughs> speaking of mechs bismarck what, old friend? These are the. This is the uh, the Revenge of Nuggets, level two point two. Okay. All right, so we've wrecked a couple. Oh yeah, we we're gonna go check out that small school post. Let's get ready to rumble. Let's see if my new uh, mech designs can hold their own, or if I'm just gonna get my face, my face wrecked and worse. Right. Dabs in regret. Revenge of Nuggets. You are set to launch. Okay, how many are we dealing with? Two mechs, two tanks. So it's a fair-ish fight. Uh, but we are starting way on the off foot. Alright, 
Let's get you get your kids into cover. Because we are gonna have to play a little bit of a shotgun fun gun. pop-up pirate. An old shenanigans tradition of mech pilots everywhere. Let's see who's got the, the who's let's see who's got more momentum in this scrap. Uh, so Douglas says, Oh, this looks like you have to plan your moves based on predictions of your enemies' moves. Exactly. Now, the thing that we get with this that um, games like Fasale and stuff didn't have is we have like basically uh, our onboard AI can predict five seconds into the future. So we can essentially use I, I describe it as time travel. But in the same way that Jägermeister is technically time travel, in that if you drink enough of it, you can lose hours. Um, it does allow us to, to to predict the next five seconds and act accordingly. Oh, okay. How come I never get those kind of shots when they're with their long range shoddy rounds? Come on. Break his wee face. There we go. There we go. Oh. Those are some strong rounds. Alright, this guy's about to have a very bad time. Fast driver curt it. What hell? Yeah, right in the, right in the mech guns. But also, feckin' wee! Uh, bus driver, this is Phantom Brigade. This is giant robot, simultaneous turn-based action, and it is king glorious. Welcome to my cavalcade of chaos. Tank goes bye-bye. <laughs> we call that shooting a tank in the no-no zone. All right, who's got more weight? Quite sure who I think they got more hurt than I did. Oh, you've got to wait till you finish crashing. All right, so I might not have come out of that the winner. And the thing is, sometimes it's about being big enough to admit. When maybe, maybe, the plan isn't going to... The plan isn't going to... as necessarily intended. Alright. Uh, 
Um, so, uh, Wonder is asking, so in this universe, are you canonically the only person to have this, premi this uh, premonition technology? I believe so. Now, we don't know anything really narratively about this game, other than... Other than we are the defense force of a country that has just been invaded. Uh, okay, well, Matt, I feel I feel good about getting that right because after like cocking up the uh, unity guess, all right, this tank is about to get riggedy wrecked. Not today, Satan! Are you still alive? I cast shenanigans. Shunk Lord might be overheating. Uh, Bismarck, I couldn't comment on the the like the narrative weight of it at this point. Um, it seems to be very much uh, kind of you know we are we are the liberators defenders in this game, so it seems to have more of kind of like a okay chipper feels the wrong way to phrase it, but it seems to be more hopeful than it is. Oh, come hang out, Dag's here. Uh, if you haven't met, this is River by the way. Can I say hello, River. Oh, that sounded like something exploding. Oh, this building is hecked. Oh! Okay, that's feckin' cool. We shot a hole through the building. Alright, so I need you to come over here. And then I'm gonna need you to use that wonderful rifle of yours to make that guy regret his choices. You, you I have a job for. You're going to follow Billy Bad Word over here. You all right, so you you I need you to run over here. And then on that timeline, like I said, just make that person regret their choices. You and you to come round this way. him forget about uh, anything sensible he's done in the last five minutes. And break! Uh, and that building is coming right the heck down. Alright. You... Help but notice that you, with your very long rifle, missed literally everything. So we're going to go for a lovely walk up around this way, and then we're going to decide. Ah, see, this is where it gets tricky. It's trying to find that little, that sweet spot moment when you've got that that kind of perfect eyes on, like right there. That's when they need to be exchanging fire. nice and slow as the building comes down tank rounds ripping through
Oh, Matt, you know what I've done? Okay, also, they just killed their own friendo. There was no mercy there. Uh, I was aiming at the wrong bloody tank. Oh, my bloody arm! Well, I got good news, and I got bad news. needed that. <sighs> it's like, why do you hurt me like this? What if, friends, what if all along I've just been terrible at video games and I didn't know it? You know what, though? Like, secretly, I was taught that. Well, has it occurred to you that your mech's mostly armorless? Found a beast. I don't have an end to that threat. So help me. Somebody hit somebody here. I'm not sure who's winning, but it doesn't feel like me. <laughs> Pibsy, you're right. Turkey Day approaches fast. What ho? Or is this is currently Thanksgiving? Because tanks keep giving me a fucking headache. Oh. And again, Matt, please don't think that any of my expletives are otherwise drained at the game. It's me. The problem is me. I am a dingus. say um, the melee combat has been a little confusing um, but is that because I'm trying to do improvised melee because really I just want to just smash into this feckin tank with my shield super duper slow motion because our other guy's going to do a run and gun. This is either going to be a massive success or a huge catastrophe. So we booty bounce the tank. It's going good. We didn't crash. That boy sure can't wait for my other arms to get ripped off. I think at this point, we need another mech. I, I, I definitely need someone to, to hard carry. Alright, so we stamp their tracks into oblivion. Alright, you got one more for me there? Lord of Nugs? Oh, that shield is coming down. 
I don't I don't alarm you friends, but the pilot there, little Tim Tim, he's not coming home. Oh, and BZ, thank you kindly for the follow. Alright, I love talking games industry stuff. Giant robots are a huge passion of mine. Uh, I used to work in the games industry before I started doing this, so uh, if you ever want to know about them Vidya games. Nug, Nug, where are you going? Let's have a look at our opponents. Both of them are feckin' easy breezy bastards. Okay, you have a heavy shotgun, you have a medium rifle. See, the rifle person right now is my big concern. over there. Let's see how it goes. Also, the calm, peaceful music really does kind of complement the, the slow-mo visual display that's going on. It's... I don't know why a lot of giant robot game developers think that all we want in this world is thumping techno. But you know what? Sometimes, thumping techno is not the right... Also, that tank is so fat. I just buried that tank in the ground. Oh, shit. Okay, so I might have gone through my other robot at the same time. There may This may not have gone as planned. That's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt in just a few seconds. We need to get the fecking feck out of here. I mean, we did just destroy a tank by stamping on it. I feel pretty, pretty badass. And I feel like I'm kind of learning. So like the angle is like the ricochet of where you go after, right? See if that works, shall we? Now ourselves a nice little shield fight. Ah. Could this be? Oh, that's some good hits on there, though. All right, see, I believe in you.
All right. It might overheat. It might explode. We're going to beat this guy to death with a feckin' shield. Welcome to the improvised bashing board. Now you are... More rickety. But we can start running you back. Which means that right about there... And maybe... may work out. Alright. Let's bring this nice and down into slow-mo. Oh, uh, Duncan, actually the music does change between um, planning and combat. It's just, it's real smooth. Like a lot of really good audio design, it's very subtle. Like I said, it's not thumping, thumping techno. I'm still proud of myself, though, because music changes a great deal. For, um, what was it? Um, oh, it was the the, the live-action commercial for Titanfall. I changed the music to I'm Walking on Sunshine, and it drastically improved the entirety of that, let me tell you. Uh, I don't, how do I feel like we're not winning over here? Get some shots, though. One. Wreck his face! Here we go, bashing board! Oh! Still going, still going. Nope! Just got his legs shot off. That's bad. Took off the shield. Oh no, see. How long have I got to your back on your feet? be okay to get one more bashing board hit in and to uh, Adelaide I am loving this game so much now obviously I'm incredibly biased I love the games that have inspired this I love the things that have come before I'm a giant robot obsessive um, I mean you haven't even seen the wall of Gundams behind me I only started doing that this year but Um, but I'm having an incredibly good time with this. BOFF! Friends, tell me you saw that ricochet! First unit smacked it into second unit who shoved it over. Okay, so you... I need you to go this way. Actually, you no. Know, you need to go this way. Then you're going to go this way. You are just going to keep wailing on this until there is nothing left. That's it. That's the play. So they're just going to do shield and wait. All right. Uh, we didn't quite get the same strong hit that time. But that's okay. Oh, shit. They're inactive. <gasps> we might do this. Okay, 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 okay. Everybody. All right. We got this. We got this. Uh, bashing board. How are you doing? You've got 
You are running on fumes. You know what? Limp here. Just, just shield up. Whatever this thing throws at you, shield up. Now you, you have one job. Just unleash hell on the back of this unit. Execute. Here we go. Oh, you were blocking the wrong person! Break his face, break his face! Or his butt, I don't care! Oh, Adelaide was saying uh, the composer is Riley uh, Cohen. Oh, lovely. No, they're still in the fight! Oh! No, not in the fight. Yes! Fucking wee! Mm! Thank you, thank you. No, please, please. Hold your applause. I understand as one of the great mech commanders of our time. Honestly, just victory comes to... <laughs> Of course, that was the one we didn't use the points thingy on, but feckin' woo. Um. Ah, oh, Varbles, no! Uh, also, it looks like body parts, a whole bunch of stuff. You got wrecked. Oh, we found a lot of good gear. We'll, we'll, we'll salvage the, uh, the nuggets. Okay, light armor, continue. Salvage, very yes. Oh, oh, Varbles is like, make it a double! Fucking grumble, grumble, grumble. On the plus side, though, friends, um, for those of you who have just found us today, this is the Gundams. There are a lot of unbuilt ones. I have quite a few built ones. You can see the fucking Saku and all of the, the nonsense there. Ugh. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must dab twice and make a complete tit of myself. Are you proud of yourself, Arbles? Do you do you feel pride swelling in your chest? Oh. Even my dog's disappointed in me. River, avert your eyes. Remember me as I was. Remember me as I was. <sighs> Make me embarrass myself in front of the cool kids. Hubbacha! Hubbacha! No, no, Matt, don't, don't follow for that. Don't, don't, don't encourage that. <laughs> oh, heckin' yes! All right, let's continue the salvaging. Actually, can we salvage and repair at the same time? We can. Uh, so now I've got to work out how to make another one. Oh, and uh, uh, yeah, Adelaide, thank you kindly for the follow as well. Again, I should say, friends, the most of what we do here is we talk about games industry stuff. We talk a lot about um, both the things we love about video games, but also the industry behind it, the construction of Stop it. Stop that incessant clicking. <laughs> and Varbles, thank you for gifting a sub to, to Dungan. Uh, uh, do, do Gunthi Maximus. Ho. Oh. A double dab, two for one deal. Oh, my word. Um, but I'm also, like, I really love the industry beh behind video games as well. Like, I miss GDCs. I miss... Having a pint with people and finding out what all the cool stuff going on is. I miss that. Yeah, me 
make a brand new unit. That's what I want to know. Because I'm going to need one of those. One dev per dab. Oh, and Pepsi Dash. Um, uh, we have subs for... Uh, sorry, we have uh, links for subs only just to stop bots. It's nothing against yourself. Oh, did we talk at, um, at the Seattle Indies? Because that sounds about right. I know, because uh, I've been bugging Ryan about Phantom Brigade since it was announced. You know the packs where Danny Stop B did his gig? Um, and the whole, like, brace yourselves party. Uh, I was, uh, yeah. Uh, as soon as I was made aware that Phantom Brigade was a thing, I was like... <gasps> Sorry, I don't mean to, I'm not uh, name dropping, it's more just, I don't know. I miss everybody, you know? I miss those, like, 4am Marriott lobby conversations about, like, highbrow industry stuff. I miss... I miss hearing about people's cool projects that I won't be able to say anything about for ages. Oh, you get enough supplies to build a new mech frame. You can build from the workshop that's located. Oh, yes, that was the thing. Okay, unit build. Frame custom standard issue parts. So what I should do is I should... So production level two. Might actually just build a whole ass. Just a whole ass frame with goodies, you know? We got time. Um, I mean, I will say, like, I've been doing the games industry gathering that um, uh, that uh, Guy puts on, which has been very good, like, talking with devs every Friday. And one of the cool things about doing content creation full-time as opposed to, like, dev side is I get to support whatever games, and unless it's something I've been directly involved in, I can speculate without having to worry about, like, NDA or friend EA breakage, unless it's directly related to those. So... Uh, and I will say, like, this year, the industry has been so drastically different. It's definitely made the conversations a lot more fresh, you know what I mean? Alright, so here we go. So, dabs of regret. Upper body, we've still got the... The Nox L. Oh, we can upgrade it to the Nox L3. Yeah, there we go. Ah. Shield, 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 handgun. Heavy shoddy, lots of assault rifles. Lovely, lovely. Oh, left arm. Here we go. go so now we've got like one proper nox l frame which doesn't quite put us up to like level three so the idea is the level of the unit denotes each part has a level so if you get a full set of three it's three and i think that works real well oh barbels how did I miss that you just gave us sub to Pepsi Dash? Please, Nora. I'm all, it's just, I see nothing but giant robots right now. <laughs> Sephiro, what ho, friend? Is it, uh, is it your 39th today? Because if it is, happy birthday and congrats. But yeah, um, Adelaide, Matt, and obviously to the rest of your team, this game is glorious and it makes my little, like, mech fan happy. I love this series and I'm not in... I am not in the habit of giving out praise that, for the sake of it, you know what I mean?
but feck, I'm having a great time with this game. And I don't know how it is for everybody to watch. Oh yeah, the pilot died. You need to get one of those. Anyone got a pilot left over? Oh yeah, we don't have many of our... Uh, we don't have the same uh, chunky parts left anymore. But... We can get a left shield. Couple of sturdy arms on this thing. Uh, Weirdo says watching this is cool AF. I'm I'm digging it. <laughs> I, I will admit, Matt. Like usually when I play these kind of things, I do. Well, if I play them even vaguely well, it's by myself. Uh, and as I'm sure you've noticed, I'm being very blasé with this. Feck, I'm having a great time. Also found. Sorry to, to go into the weeds of it, but the but the biz dev of giant robot games has always been rather fascinating. Ah, oh, I can't recruit a new pilot. So I've got two units, but not enough humans. All right, so we got to hit some patrols. We're gonna hit some patrols with um, uh, Revenge of the Dabs. Oh, sorry, Dabs of Shame to make enough cash to go hire a new pilot. Um, but yeah, the biz dev of actually selling giant robot games is very difficult. Even like outside of titles like Battletech that come from a huge established IP, it's very difficult to get eyeballs on. And again, I don't mean to, to toot horns. I'm not uh, looking to, to carry favor or anything, but you know, one of the things I have noticed is that, you know, the Brace Yourself team has done a great job of... Let's kick your ass. Has done a great job of demonstrating the value of these titles. Alright, now let's see if I can do this with one unit. One high-speed unit. Oh crap, I've got to paint it. Friends, we nearly went out to battle unpainted. That would have been that would have been a very big mistake. Got that good accent arm. Yeah, fearless. No grey in November is still in full force. Uh, Breezy says, what are the biggest new video game IPs in the past few years? Do you mean in giant robot space or in just video game space as a whole? Hang on, I'll tell you what, let me kick this fight off and we can keep chatting on this one. Um, the scariest... Oh, game space overall. Yeah, Fortnite's the biggest new one and probably the scariest. Uh... Oh, we can't win this. This was meant to be a one blip difficulty! Um, is there a retreat button? Can I, can I retreat please? Am I, am I allowed to retreat? <laughs> Adelaide's like, you can eject. It said it was a green blip mission! All right, this piano track feels painfully apt. Oh, I'm so sorry, robot. You trusted me. You trusted me to lead you to victory, and I've done no such thing. All right, friends. If we're going out, we're going out in style. 
If we've got to lose the robot. Adelaide says, I love this track because it gives me the Evangelion vibes. Oh, absolutely. God. It's interesting because we've had the blueprints for the dramatic, emotional, giant robot game from other mediums for a long time. And this is one of the the first that it where it struck me. You know, because uh, Battletech has its whole, like, tribalist, like, almost in uh, like medieval clans it, well not clans, medieval houses in space, clan invasions later oh god so actually Breezy we can come back to the big IP discussion but I actually wanted to jump onto the other thing you said which is um, me and uh, my good buddy Tog Solid who is another giant robot fanatic, we got wine drunk the other night and we're talking about the fact that series like this you know giant robot series admittedly we were focusing on Battletech again but they deserve like a proper good like HBO treatment like give me one of those um wait no so Adelaide you're telling me this is the hopeless battle music oh I done fucked up I done fucked up all right never give up never surrender and do it in slow motion. <laughs> this is the music we play when you send a pilot to die. Fuck! Sorry, it's it. That's an inspired choice. This is genuinely genius. Four tanks. Two other mechs, one pilot. Oh. Alright, but I swear to the old gods, if I see anyone with a spear and a pair of wings in this fight, I will lose my head. Oh, poor pilot! Oh, um, Matt just wanted to say credit for the tune goes to Riley uh, Coining, uh, who was the composer. He made the track and we were like, we have to find someone to use this. And so it's just for hopeless battles. out already? Oh, they tripped us up in our feeties! Screw you, tiny tank! This is it. Dying on the Canadian wastelands. Maybe we're getting lucky and they'll blow each other up. Oh, no! <laughs> I feel so guilty! I'm not usually in the habit, dear friends, of requesting if someone could clip just a, just a smidgen of that, uh, of that run against the, the, the wall of tanks. Because Riley, that was heartbreaking and I have a feeling that's what you were intending. That was the end of Evangelion moment. That was our our unit charging towards. Now, some could say that maybe I, as the mech commander, could have paid more attention to what we were fighting. Lasted. Five seconds. Damage inflicted. None. Pull back! <laughs> Run away! Back your couch! Mm 
Okay, base has been restocked. Operations are ready. Yeah, Adelaide, that whole scene was what I was getting fresh feelbacks from. Oh. That gave me some feckin' chills. So, look, friends, I tell you what. We've done five and a half hours on this, and... Oh, Adelaide says, wait till we have pilot cameras and expressions. Yo! Well, if you ever need a ginger Brit to put in, just, like, <laughs> hit me a message. I will sign those release forms. Sorry. I, I Again, I'm not trying to insert myself here. Just, I'm trying to balance that whole thing between, like, games industry professional and monstrous fan of my friend's work. Do you know what I mean? What I'm going to do, friends, is I'm going to roll credits in a second and do thank yous. And I think I'm going to see if anybody else is doing Phantom Brigade and pass it on. Because, like, Matt, Riley, Adelaide, like, I, I feel I should be passing on to more mecha-flavored people. But I do want to say thank you for coming to hang out. This won't be the last time we play this here. And, you know, it's it's lovely to, to, to at least digitally hang out. Oh, I didn't even talk your ear off about half the giant robot nonsense I thought I was going to be talking about. This is a game that does not ask for one's attention, it draws it in. It is incredibly tense and to the wire, but at the same time calm and thought through. Oh, I... Oh, um, I, this is probably why I love it. Um, uh, Adelaide, 8th Emmett's team is like one of my top three. It's like that, Iron Blooded Orphans, and um, uh, Gundam Thunderbolt when it comes to the Gundam nonsense. Oh, look, I just, I guess I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the hard work and time that you've all put in because it shines through. It really does. Just thank you for. Rolling the dice on a game that, from a biz dev standpoint, doesn't make sense. This is the kind of game that you have to, you have to love it to want to create it. No one gets into the giant robot business to make money. And, well, I mean, I will be hoping you make an inordinate amount of cash. Oh, Adelaide's got a, a, a 79G on the desk. I've got the EZ8 back in the, back there. I also have like. 20 kits I need to put together but that's been my my lockdown sanity hobby is building Gundams <laughs> uh, Adelaide was just saying they've got an awesome team and they're surprised Ryan backed it I don't know from what I've from the amount of time I've gotten to spend with Ryan he doesn't make he doesn't make stupid part stupid buys so, I don't know you or your your biz dev model well enough to comment entirely, but I don't know. This is going to sound cheesy as all hell, but there's something about this game that shines through. I can feel it. I haven't had enough time to digest it. I don't know what it is, but like I, I'm going to keep playing this. I just I need to just quietly sit down, pour another cuppa. And just pour over the, the the little details of this. Oh, uh, yeah, um, Adelaide, thank you for answering that. Um, Ryan Clark's the founder of Brace Yourself Games, most notably uh, from uh, Crypt of the Necro Dancer and Cadence of High Rule, but uh, also uh, Titans uh, Industries of Titan. I always get that the wrong way around. He has got a reputation in the industry, but it is a good one. Um, Okay, so yeah, I'm going to roll credits and thank people, and then I'm going to take everybody over. We'll see if there's another Phantom Brigade stream going. Um, to my lot, to all of you that have thrown bits and hung out, like, here we are, playing mech games on a Tuesday. I know I'm getting very feelsy about this, but have you seen this game? It's fucking glorious. Let's go hang out in the back of the vehicle. Um, first up... I'd like to say thank you to Nom Nom Fighter for donating cash monies. 
Uh, that stuff goes directly onto food. It makes my life much, much easier because I can eat. Uh, to Lizzie T. Pow, Sari Greenfire, Favor 6, The Bacon Avenger, Shackle to Connors, Neo Pale Varbles, J Post Tarlicus, Pepsi Dash, Pun Spectre, Get to the Boat, League of Anonymous Cheerers, and Wandering Gamer, and Vanderbeast. Like, bits are literally what is allowing me to do this day in, day out, and. I think you all know by now how happy this makes me, so thank you. Uh, your moderation team today was Caffeine, um, Tarlicus, and we definitely had Lizzie T. Powell. And our new followers, I'd like to thank devs and new peoples alike. So to Adelaide, uh, Matt Dinelli, uh, Dat Daisy, uh, Jason Long TV, um, Bezio, Jake Tucker, uh, Riley, thank you, uh, Kingley's Revenge. Um, I hope we get to hang out and chat more. Now, those that were gifted subs, hunted, or celebrating long sprees, I'd like to thank Harmonious, Spence, Matt, uh, Vendian, uh, Luke Malio, Soviet Masardi, uh, Ostatrini, Pop Time, Lol Manzi, that MS Gamer, uh, Alcoholic Day. Oh my game. word! Oh, you're gonna throw me off! Ubermook, uh, Red Sev, the Dismook, Alness, Matt Donnelly, Hookshot, Gilbot, uh, that Rami, as in Rami is male, Brace Yourself Games, the Rikami, Jack Tucker, Dunga Max with a Pepsi Dash, and now I've got to thank a whole bunch of people! Um, some spooky ghost just gifted out 10 subs Stop like it's no big deal. Clicking. Those went to Dazlet, MC Catmaster, Riley, Rocket, Nova Police, Knocked Out, Jason Gowan, Gamers Record, and False Festival, and Jeanette. Fucking yo! Well, now we've got to hang around whilst uh, I say proper thank yous at the end of this. Stop that incessant clicking. glorious Mother Hubbard. Uh, cause, um, I guess if you don't know my story, like Riley and Matt and everybody, I was game dev for a long, long time. And I kind of fell into streaming as an individual. Uh, I'd run like, you know, com I'd run channels for companies and I- Stop that incessant clicking. Well, suffice it to say I love doing it. And I get to do it cause these mother- OH MY WORD! Oh, <laughs> Ravager, you feckin' terror! Oh, J-Post with chaos! Alright, I guess we're hanging out for a little bit longer now, you feckin' terrors. Stop that incessant clicking! Oh, feckin' yo! <sighs> On top of all of that, another five subs from El Ravager that went to Adelaide, uh, as in... Uh, Dabizi, uh, DJ Leatherly, Stop and Playroom. No, I'm gonna start getting real feelsy before I pass you over to another Phantom Brigade person, but look. I love doing this, and these Mother Hubbards keep me alive to do it. So, like, I, I don't have a brand manager that I have Stop to ask permission from. I could just play a game and go, you know what? I love this game. This is a good game. It's gonna destroy my sleep pattern and my attempts to finish Spelunky 2, but feck it! Giant robots! Oh, uh, Ian! You feck it! Stop that incessant clicking! And a spooky ghost! <laughs> Ravage is like, heck it, house, house order. And Adelaide's like, well, no, no, no. Self-care first. Clicking. Giant mechs will be there when you return. Oh, lordy, lordy. Oh. I mean, I, I'm not going to say anything out loud, Ian, but the intent is very kind. And you know... Stop that incessant clicking. You know that does a bunch for, for my dumb self, so thank you, all right? And Vanderbeast attempting to do some house order refills there. Oh, heck no. I guess we're doing this. I guess we're doing this. All right. So I'm going to zoom out because... The train is made of giant robots! We actually have a giant... It's already at level three. What the hell? <laughs> it's like, more mech screen time! I have no control over this lot. <laughs> Adelaide with choo choo! I'm a mech! 
Twitch. It's a very serious place. Stop that incessant clicking. Oh, and uh, Clank and Jason, like, thank you for throwing in some small bits as well. Like, seriously, it adds up at the end of a month, and it's how I have been staying alive in 2020, so I'm very grateful. And I hope you had a fucking glorious day. The train's doing its thing, so we're going to be here for, Stop like, four or five minutes. Clicking. Oh, I mean, at least. The, the longship decides now how long we're going to be here. Yeah, oh no, Clank. No, very serious, very professional. I've actually had conversations with Mr. Twitch about this, and I say, Mr. Twitch, it's a very serious professional place you have Stop here. Stop incessant clicking. And he says, why are you in my house? Please leave. <laughs> Neo pair with Noot Noot! Oh. Zuo's saying, do you ever worry when you say things like, Stop the long ship decides? Clicking. Not really, uh, Zuo. When you think about it, like, you lot have been deciding, you know, the fate of the long ship for two years now, so. You know, here we are, friends. <laughs> Still here. It's just, you know, Stop that incessant clicking. two years and six guinea pigs later. No, I really don't. Okay, then. Ian's got a good point. Technically, two and a half. Uh, and Zuo, we do not speak about the forbidden snack. We do, we do not. <laughs> it's just caught up with the spooky ghost. Do not speak of this forbidden snack. No, it was delicious. It's it's forbidden because it does me a damage. It takes days to recover from that. Like actual days. Oh. <laughs> Ian, I want you to know I can hear your laugh. I wouldn't even know I could hear your laugh through that alert. Oh, lordy, lordy. Also, like I said, I'm really, really digging the the XCOM meets giant robots-ness of this all. It is hitting me in some places. Because the thing is, I'm trying not to ask for... I'm trying not to feature creep on you all, because I know there is a lot of development work to go, and creating a game like this is an absolute challenge. <laughs> The forces of chaos shall not pass this gate. Although I will say, if you ever take um, suggestions in terms of uh, streamer nonsense, um, pulling pilot names and uh, enemy names from the lovely Mother Hubbard in chat is something I've always wanted. But that's another story. Uh, L Ravager, do not put fingers in your tea! That's not what they're for! <laughs> noot, noot. Okay, 45 seconds on the train. Uh, there are a lot of lovely Mother Hubbards. Actually, I, I, well, I can't speak for them. We shall definitely throw things over to another one of the Phantom Brigade lot. Sewer so, oh, no. You do not dunk chicken fingers into your tea, you absolute criminal. There we have it. Second train of the day. Glorious Mother Hobbits, thank you. <laughs> choo choo indeed, right? You get like the, the cheeky little rogue emote. <laughs> J Bo's like, what about second credits? I thanked you directly, you terrors. Do I have to do second credits?
Is, is this where we're going with this? Regina Viper says, yes, I have to do second credits. Oh, my word. Your mods for second credits. Oh. I don't think he's heard of second credits. All right, all right. Okay, second credits is happening. Here we go. <laughs> so on top of the people I already thanked. Okay. On top of the people I already thanked. Friends, I would like to thank... Is it doing everybody? It says Nom Nom Fighter again. Okay, no, we're doing this and then some. So, to Nom Nom Fighter... Lizzie T. Power, Sorry Green Fire, Favor Six, Fearless Sun, Bacon Adventure, Shack of the Connors, Neo Pale, Varbles, J Post, Dalekus, uh, Pepsi Dash, uh, Pun Spectre in Feathers, Gets the Boat, The League of Spooky Ghost Anonymous Cheerers, The Wandering Gamer, Fander Beast, I see you, Spooky Ghost, uh, Clank Crusher, um, Jason Long TV, like, thank you all again. I know I said it before, but it warrants saying twice, like, you are keeping a roof over our head and letting us buy food right now, so we are very grateful. Your second credits moderators were Caffeine and Talicus. Um, and we're going to thank our new followers again. Um, partially to try and emotionally guilt trip them to coming back and talking more biz dev with me. <laughs> so to Riley going to um, uh, Adelaide, uh, Matt Donatelli, uh, Dabizi, uh, Jason Long, uh, Bizio, <laughs> Jake Tucker, Kingly Revenge, J-Post, why? Additional chaos. Like, thank you. I I do hope we get to hang out some more. Now to Harmonious Spence Mac, uh, Vesidane, Vesidian, hmm. Luke Milito, Soviet Biscardi, or Tazzini, Pop Time, Lol, Manzi, uh, That MS Gamer, uh, uh, Alcohol Day, 69, nice. Uh, the Uber Moop, uh, Retsev, Dismook, Alness, Donatelli, Hookshot, Gilbot, and the Rami. Brace yourself! Games! <laughs> no, we had the Rami and the Rikami, Jake Tucker, uh, D D uh, uh, Gunthy Maximus, oh, nearly fell over on that one, Pepsi Dash, Dalzet, Riley Koning, uh, Rocket, uh, X, uh, Rocket 16, Knockout XD, Nova Police, MC Catmaster, Jason Lang TV, Gamer Record, False Visual, Jinnet, uh, Adelaide, uh, uh, Eisen, Dabizi, DJ Lethality, Bleed Nora, and Playroom! Oh, I think I said all of your usernames about five times there. Oh, Favor Six, get out! Get out. Alright, so friends, look, I I'm gonna send you over to someone who looks like they're doing way better. So, uh, I was skimming, and there is a person who goes by Van Davy who currently has four people watching him play this. So let's go make someone's day, all right? Let's go make someone's day. We can go over there, we can be lovely Vikings, shake stuff up. Um, oh yeah, by the looks of things as well, uh, Van Davy is much further in. He's got like sniper rifles and cool stuff. Uh, I guess he didn't get his face wrecked by the first few missions. So look. To all the team from Brace Yourself Games, thank you for coming in and thank you for the game you've made. To the long ship of you glorious Mother Hubbards keeping me alive, I'll never be able to say enough thank yous, which is why these endings take so bloody long. But I'm always going to give it a try. Oh, okay. Uh, friends, if you need me, I'll be in the, the back of the van tinkering on our mech. But uh, for now, let me send you over to someone who seems to be far more competent than I am. Have a lovely rest of your evening. I'll see you tomorrow. Viking Blah, thank you for that raid. How are you doing today? Hi, everybody. Everybody, is it Sunday, Tuesday? How's everybody's Tuesday going? I'm hey, track dude. of the days. How goes it? How's everybody doing? I hope I wasn't making too much noise. 
No, it's all good. Oh, we're going to vacuum the hell out of it a bit. Yeah, ah, small. It's like half of that's just going to be shooting the building. Okay. I can't make sure that it's. I think of the game so far. I really, really enjoy it. I'm a big fan okay. of like mech games in general. Um, I think it's a little bit more fast paced than like Battletech. Oh, it's becky glorious. It's like um, all the stuff that I really loved about. Um, so Battletech's a lot about like kind of like positioning uh, and then just basically well, having well, a, a mech that shoots uh, 18,000 missiles. Uh, but also. It's not a bad thing, don't get me wrong. Showing us. Um, a